Bandwidth for first updates now is supported by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. People are interested. But you know what? If you send me an email, you'll get a response and it will be from me. And I really don't have any desire to. Um, you haven't watched the trailer at all? No, no. A lot of people haven't heard of the couch division. So uh, it's a comfy division to be in, though. It's super comfy. Um, it's almost too comfy at times. Your response to, to teams who see that as a, a new potential issue with districts? Yeah, that's really a two pronged question. Let's see if there's any damage from that fall. There was. They snapped 330. Still on their back. Six seconds to go. Well, it was the highest rank. But then as, votes, as votes continue to yeah. pour in, everything kind of changes around the little so we can get the right. First Updates Now is brought to you by Twitch. Fun is now a Twitch partner and offering some awesome subscriber-only benefits. Subscribe today or get a free subscription each month when you have Amazon Prime by linking your account and clicking subscribe. Coming up on First Updates Now Recap, week three has come and gone. An amazing set of events that we saw here today. We got Will Bardnickel in from 2481, the Roboteers, world champions, baby, to talk to us about his experiences in Central Illinois Regional and to give his experiences in week three. We do have the first updates or first, wow, FRC Top 25 coming up in just a little bit after that. So stay tuned. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds. And I'm Mike Stark. I'm Justin Montoys, and as Tower just mentioned, we do have Will with us from FRC 2481. Mike there we go. <laughs> the world champion Roboteers. Uh, he's in his ninth FRC season. He's also the senior engineer and lead projects in condition-based maintenance for a Caterpillar. Welcome to the show, Will. Thanks for having me, guys. It's always fun. Awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks for being back, man. Uh, also back this week, after a week off, we have Christina Tia from Wordplay All Day, uh, who's going to be drawing up and giving away an awesome robot that we're all very excited about. Christine, welcome back. Uh, which robot will we be drawing today, and what inspired you to pick this one? Microphone. You're muted. Muted time. Oh, sucker. Uh, so... <laughs> Glad to be back. <laughs> um, <laughs> 11 more teams, 2008 robot. It's easily one of the most epic robots of 2008, and it's one of my favorite robots. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that will be tonight's giveaway. Awesome. Good pick. Watching that robot at championship was incredible. Seriously, just watching that huge trackball just fly over the overpass is incredible so so don't forget um to be entered to win this awesome giveaway you either have to follow or subscribe to our page so give that little button on the top a little click and come on and join fun nation uh, so fun nation subscribers have five times uh more chance to win um and you can subscribe for free each month with amazon prime or join in for the long haul for only a few dollars a month uh subs also get other sweet benefits including custom emotes and other giveaways uh we also have a new discord channel that you can keep the conversation going all week long uh which will be posted by nightbot in our chat so there you go all right, so we're going to start out with a recap of week three. Uh, and Will, man, you're welcome to jump in on any of these. I know you and I were at the Central Illinois Regional all week and we'll, or all weekend, and we're going to want to make sure we get your input on that. Uh, but any of these other teams that pop in your mind, feel free to jump in. Uh, Justin, why don't you start us out up in the Pacific Northwest? All righty, Mount Vernon High School. Talk about the Mount Vernon event hosted 28 teams for the Mount Vernon District event. And after 12 matches, 58-03, uh, who won Mountain View earlier this year with the number one seed. They selected 32-38 and would add 41-73 and look to add their second blue banner of the year. In their quarterfinal rounds, the number eight alliance threatened the upset, winning match one, but number one alliance would win the final two matches to advance to the semifinals and eventually onto the finals where they would face number three alliance of 29-07, 36-63, and 4-88. In the finals, the power of the number one alliance uh, was clear and they were able to take the event in two matches. So congrats to them as well as 2980 who picked up the district chairman's award. We're going to stay right here in the Pacific Northwest to talk about the other district event, which was at Central Washington. So 38 teams competed looking at game points to qualify toward the Pacific Northwest District Championship. Remember, all these district event teams trying to accumulate those all-important points. 1595 took hold the number one alliance and added 24 
2046 and 3219 and quickly advanced all the way to the finals. There they met the number three alliance of 4125, 4061, and 2148. After taking the first match, the Moran Alliance put in 18 kilopascals of pressure to overcome what would have been a 305-305 tie to give them the win. So congrats to them as well as 4125 Confidential, who won the District Chairman's Award. Awesome, Justin. Cool. So we're going to move over to the Israel District. Uh, we're starting off with event number three. Uh, so with some high-level play already seen in Israel in the Israeli District events this season, we saw some more of that this past week at the number three event. Uh, we saw some more dominance from 1574 Miscar. They took the number one seed and selected 4320 and 2231. In the finals, they saw the number three alliance of uh, 3083, 1577, and 4744. After DQ in match one against the blue third alliance, uh, they had to fight back, but the pure dominance of the number one alliance showed, that showed and they had won the second match 372 to 240. Um, congrats to Miss Car uh, 2231. Uh, or to Miss Car, 2231 Onyx Tronics and 4320 The Joker on their district wins. And congrats to 1574 Miss Car on their district chairman's award as well. So that's three banners on the year for them so, so far. Um, and then moving over to district event number four in the Israel district, we kind of use this term like back to back events, but this was literally back to back. They ended on like, I don't know what exact day it was, but ended one day and the next day the next event was starting. Um, so in the number four event, it was Orbit who took the number one seed, but their alliance was taken down in the semi by the number five alliance of 4590, 4338, and 2231. This number five alliance would face the number three alliance in the finals. And the finals went to three matches, with the blue alliance taking the first win, but the next two wins would go to the red alliance with scores of 254 and 266. Um, and that would seal the win for the number five alliance of 4590, Green Blitz, 4338, 2231 Onyx Tronics, who we just talked about. They won back to back events, number three and number four, all in the same week. I think, what, six out of seven days competing or something like that. So, um, congrats to them and congrats to 339 Bumblebee um, on the District Chairman's Award at the number four event. Yeah, we're really starting to see some uh, Israeli teams come to light. I mean, you got Miskar, you had Orbit, you have Bumblebee, uh, you know, a lot more teams, especially with district play. I think, uh, you know, we we're going to see, obviously, way more teams from Israel this year here at Champs. Be very excited to see uh, how they perform at South Champs this year. All right, so following the Southern Cross Regional that we did cover on Game Day Live uh, last night, I had the privilege to stay up until 2 in the morning and do that. Uh, South Pacific Regional picked up only a day after. So it seemed like the event would uh, take the same turn. Kind of the nice thing is, is you just, if the event was in the same arena, you can just kind of leave it there the whole time. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to reset anything. Uh, and... It kind of just seemed like the same thing over again. 46-13, Barker Redbacks took the number one seed and picked up the team they just beat only a couple days prior in 31-32, Thunder Down Under, and wrapped it up with 56-48, Melbourne Robocats. Facing a little resistance with only a hiccup in semifinal one match two, the Red Alliance would score the KPA bonus in every other match and face the number three seed of 42-53, 17-72, and 64-34 in the finals. Red took both matches with a 308 to 225 first match and squeaked out a 260 to 256 victory in match two. Regional Chairman's War would go to 5985. Project uh, man, Buka Fallis. Hopefully somebody else can correct me on that. And EI going to 5663 Ground Control. Uh, do also want to give a shout out to Thunder Down Under um, at the uh, Southern Cross Regional. They took the Chairman's Award. And I just want to give a special shout out. I think they're my favorites to win chairmans this year. Uh, I've said it for a while now. In my opinion, they're 100% going to be the first not North American team to win. But I think their time is coming. And if you get a chance to watch your chairman's video, I think you'll understand why. The amazing things they've not only done just in Australia, but in other areas as well. Yeah, and don't discount the importance of that Chairman's Award video, um, especially at the Championship Chairman's Award level. And I completely agree. You know, I've been, like many of us have, been following them um, and the kind of the Championship Chairman's Award race uh, for a few years, and they're definitely a team that's on the short list for sure. All right, let's move on to Pete Street, which would feature the Columbus District uh, event with 1683 Tetno Titans taking the number one seed. Uh, however, fate was not in the number one alliance's favor as they went on the semifinals against the number four seed of 4910 East Cobb Robotics. 
6340, uh, Mars Screaming Eagles, and 3091 Hundred Scholars. Interesting name. Uh, they would go on to face a number two seed of 1746, 4188, and 6177, a couple really well known teams in the uh, Peachtree District. Blue looked to be the favorite with those couple powerhouse teams and would take the first match with their autonomous of 310 to 238. Red was thrown back, though, with two consistent matches of three robots climbing versus only two for blue and would just narrowly take the final two matches with scores of 288, the 255, and 288, the 285. Uh, 1648 G3 Robotics would get their second blue banner of the year with a chairman's award, and the Kling Bling would go to 4910 East Cobb Robotics for their Engineering Inspiration Award. All righty, so I'm going to pick it up talking about New England. Uh, district. Before I do, I just want to uh, make a quick note to everyone that's watching. We desperately, or not desperately, need, but we always love getting information from people who are actually at these events. Um, so if you're if you're interested in in you know telling us the story a little bit more about what happened at your event, message us on Facebook, send us an email. We love to get those intricate details that are really only possible and only known by the people that were actually there. So I'm going to talk about the New England North Shore District event. Uh, Reading Memorial High School hosted two teams. I don't have that there. Uh, number one seeded for 12 matches was 45-64. Orange Chaos, who went 10-1-1. One one. Uh, they went down to the 10th uh, ranked team, pick 133, with their first pick and add, would add 173. But hopes of gold would be short-lived as it would be upset by the number eight alliance, who themselves would go on to lose in the semifinals, sending the number four alliance of 47-61, 10-71, and 55-56 to the finals versus the number seven alliance of 17-21, 26-48, and 41-69. In the finals, the number four alliance would take the win in two straight matches. So congratulations to them, as well as 2648 Infinite Loop, who picked up the district chairman's award. And sticking around in New England, talking about Greater Boston, one of my featured events this week, Revere High School hosted 31 teams at this New England event. All teams played 12 intense matches. When the dust settled, it was 56-87, the outliers, who participated in Premier Night Forest and were the number one seed. They scooped up 125 the Neutrons and 65-29, putting together a very strong alliance. They were able to knock off the number eight and number four alliances very confidently and advance all the way to the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the number two alliance was also working their way confidently through the playoff tournament. The number two alliance consisted of 67-63, 95, and 39-58, and they defeated the number seven and three alliances to advance to the finals themselves. In match one, the number one alliance continued their winning ways with an impressive 377 to 255 win with an unpenalized score. Finals match two, however, the table started the turn. The number one alliance had two robots sitting still for most of the match, allowing the number two alliance to get four rotors turning and in turn take the win. Match three was the, st the story was the same. Uh, match came to a close 65 29 and 56 87. Serious trouble could not make it to the airship to, to climb or defend the fourth rotor and allow the number two alliance to again take the win. So congrats to them as well as Team 125, the Neutrons, on a silver gold cling bling winning the district chairman's award. Sweet deal. So we're going to move on over to the Northern Maryland District event where they saw 39 teams compete, but it was uh, 3941 Absolute Zero Electricity, or A's, who took the number one seed. With help of 11-11, the Powerhawks and 6-12 Chantilly Robotics, uh, they took on the district win against the number two alliance of 21-99, 14-18, and 28-49. Congrats to the Powerhawks, 11-11, on the gold gold clean bling with taking home the district chairman's award. So from there uh, to the other event, uh, district event happening in that district was the Hampton Roads. So Chesapeake District saw 29 te teams compete at this district event, and it was 1610 Blackwater Robotics who took the number one seed. They selected 2363 Triple Helix and 1793 the Pilots to their alliance. They beat the number eight in the number four alliance to meet the number three alliance in the finals of 1137, 620, and 5954. Two scores of 305 uh, both times took the win for the number one alliance, and congrats to them. And congrats to 2363 on the gold gold clean bling and taking home the district chairman's award for them. So two go-go clean lanes at the two Chesapeake district events this weekend. So moving over to the um, the North Carolina UNC Asheville event, they saw 27 teams play in 12 matches. Must be nice. And after those 12 matches, it was 29-74 who took the number one seed with a 1.91 uh, ranking score average. 
They selected 5511 Cortex Robotics and 5679 Girls on Fire uh, to their alliance, and they took home the district win. In the finals, they took uh, on the number three alliance of 6334, 4935, and 977. Congrats to the number one alliance, especially 2974 for their third banner on the year. Uh, they've also had another win and a district Women's award as well, um, and as well as to 3459 Team Pyrotech on the district chairman's award. So Greater Pittsburgh... Uh, 39 team teams competed at Pittsburgh um, with teams from China, Florida, Michigan, and Hawaii all in attendance. So after 11 matches, it was 22-52, the Mavericks, who took number one seed with a 1.72 ranking score average. They selected the obvious choice in 359, the Hawaiian kids, and then they also picked up 39-54, uh, the 4-H Electrotex. This alliance, after losing quarterfinal one match number one, went on to win two uh Two went on to win the next six straight matches, excuse me, with identical scores of 325 in their two finals <laughs> matches. In the finals, um, uh, excuse me, I'll show you this. Number six alliance of the captain, 4028, the Beak Squad, and 3492 parts, and 4991 horsepowers, who they saw in the finals. They gave a valiant effort, but just couldn't keep up with that number one alliance. Congrats to them, and congrats to 359 on their second regional win of the season, and congrats to 3260 Sharp on the Regional Chairman's Award. I, I got to jump in, Mike, because I think I saw yeah, the same thing as you. It looked like Will was coming from the depths of hell there for a moment and just like, oh, it's all over the screen. It was crazy what's <laughs> going on there. I was just trying to read the Skype chat. <laughs> I, I asked you if my camera was doing weird things, and you said I looked fine. So <laughs> yeah, apparently like fine. a demon is me looking fine. <laughs> yeah, but right now it's, it's ridiculously awesome, so <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> all right, guys, we're in for the long haul here. Uh, we just heard four from Mike, and we got four from me. Uh, in uh, Justin, how do you say it? Fam? <laughs> getting better. You're getting better, buddy. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't do it either. So, yeah, all of our – we're all coming off events right now, so it's it's a little rough. So. It is all rough. Right. All the way up in their UP would be the first of four fam events. We'd ask Inaba, you know. Taking the number one seed would be 1322 oh, Genesee Robotics Area U team selecting the 894 the Power Chargers and 904 Day Cubed. This event would be all about the number one alliance. They would move on to the finals of phase 245, 4391, and 6569, don't you know? Red would control its own destiny, though through consistent play and take both the matches, 271, 215, and 308 to 255. District Tournament's award would be earned by 3767 Titan Engineering, and uh, the Inspiration Award would go to 5878, the Great Lakers. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to normal. I'm from Wisconsin. It's close enough. Let's go back to nor normal Michigan talk, which sounds like how I just said it before. So I'll speak really <laughs> normal. All right. On a Fim Gaylord, uh, Gaylord event would uh, be follow up the Escanaba event. Similar fashion with 35, 38 Robo Jackets taking the number one seed. They'd select 1025 uh, MP or IMPI Robotics and 5502 V2 Robotics. With a couple of 40 plus KPI matches, the number one alliance took it to three in the semis and would move on to face the number six alliance of 51, 5183, and 6086. What could be considered the most consistent Elins of all time? Both matches' scores were identical to each other in the finals, with the number one alliance taking both matches, 305 to 255. That's pretty crazy. Both uh, scores were identical? Yeah, wow. both scores were 305 to 255. Wow. Less TBAs. But, uh, double gold Klinglin would go to uh, 1025 IMPI Robotics, and Engine Inspiration would go to 3618 uh, Petoskey Paladins. Wow. All right, uh, Fimgal Lake, we're moving on here. Uh, continue the third of fourth Fim events. Uh, 3656 Dreadbots would take the number one seed, but falter to the number four alliance of 5462, 2834, and 5204. Number four Red Alliance would go on to face the number seven Blue Alliance of 5623 Robotic Rams, 5675 Wirecats, and 910 Fully Freeze. Amazing 910 was picked up in as a second round pick or third round pick or whatever. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, finals would go to three matches. As the first match was tied 261 and 261, and the number seven Blue Alliance just worked better together. They were more cohesive. It would win the following two matches with scores of 238 to 210 and 291 to 255. Chairmans would be earned by 2834 Bionic Blackhawks, and EI would go to 4381 Twisted Devils. 
All right, last event here, clearly the standout this this weekend, Finn, uh, was the Waterford event, bringing some of the best of the best in Michigan together. Some heavy hitters took the field, including 27, 33, 67, 548, 17, 18, 21, 37, and 35, 39. Improving from their last performance, the number one seed to go to the 67 hot team, where they'd finally be reunited with their friends 33 and would pick up 50, 90 on the way back. The number one alliance would dredge through the semis to face the number three seed of 2137 Torque, 27 Team Rush, and 4779 Robo Sapiens. Both alliances went toe to toe in autonomous shooting, literally almost identical in both matches, uh, with KPA scores looking good on both sides. But in the first match, it was the number three Blue Alliance with only 10 seconds left by 27 Team Rush, securing the fourth rotor and climbing to take the win with the two six or I'm sorry, a 465 the 290 victory. Finals two is another close match as defense was tightened down. Both alliances tied KPA and auto and were dreadlocked with tied scores with only 30 seconds left. 33 killer bees decided to play some tough defense uh, against the blue lines by their airship, but a collision near the blue lines airship with only 24 seconds left caused 33 to disconnect and die, which allowed the blue Alliance to capitalize <laughs> by getting two climbing robots to red only getting one. Very surprising though, they died right by the airship and yet there was no uh, extra climbing awards. They actually just had two blue robots climbing, which was crazy. Uh, so alliance with blue lines would take the win 273 to 223. Chairman's award would go to 1718, the fighting pie and EI would, and Kling Bling go to 27, Team Rush. Wow, just as a, not, not, I don't want to start a controversy, but how do you guys feel about Team Rush getting the engineering inspiration award, seeing as though they're already they're already in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Hmm. Um, that could be maybe. Yeah, let's add that to the, the candidly speaking episode, Tyler. There we go. So, so one thing I'll I'll add. I don't know, Will. I'd like to get your opinion on this too. Is that at a regional, I I would care less because they're just generating an extra wild card spot, regardless, anyway. Yeah, so I guess. But at a district event where you know district points mean a big difference, that could have something. I don't know, Will. What do you think about that? Uh. Yeah, that does seem a little odd. I mean, if they've already got kind of the uh, um, that spot at champs kind of locked up, taking away district points that are kind of critical for those other teams, seems like it could be uh, um, a little bit of a, a kick in the face a little bit to some of those other teams. Um, yeah. But at the at the same time, I mean, obviously it's Team Rush; they deserve it. So yeah, it's oh, true. Yeah. you can't really. And say that's the thing; it has else. nothing, absolutely nothing, to do with Team Rush. It's more of like the the fact of the matter kind of what it means for other teams so yeah all right so i'm gonna head over to the ventura regional in california uh 42 teams competed from all over california including teams from hawaii and chile which is really cool uh after 11 matches and 10 wins 35 12 spart i always get this i always can't say this right spartatronics took the top spot. Their alliance included 58-18 and 51-36, and they would advance all the way to the finals to face the number six alliance of 25-76, 114, and 39-25. Excuse me. I'm dying. (laughs) After going back and forth in match one and two, the number six alliance took match three and the regional win. Congrats to them, as well as 39-25, who picked up the double gold cling bling by winning the chairman's award, and that's what went down in Ventura. So I'm going to head up now to the Ontario District. Uh, Featured this week is the Victoria Park Collegiate Event, or Vic Park for short. And after 12 matches, uh, 40-39, makeshift robotics took the top spot, going an impressive 12-0. With their first pick, they would select 49-39, who was arguably the best robot at the event. Fast cycling of gears added to the impressive mobility or an impressive ability of makeshift robotics to turn those rotors on. They added 61-41 at the end of the draft and headed for the elimination rounds. In match two of the quarterfinal rounds, makeshift robotics was given a red card for tipping, a common penalty last year, and making a rare appearance here in Steamworks. The more alliance, however, was able to win match three and from there easily advanced to the finals. On the other side of the bracket, the number two alliance was led by 5076, who didn't have the most beautiful robot, but as Karthik put it, uh, it was simple, effective, and consistent. They, along with 1305 and 5911, would advance to the final setting at maybe a not-so-rare uh, 1v2. It seemed like it's getting more and more common than it was earlier on. In both finals matches, the number one alliance had the edge, and it showed as they were able to defeat the number two alliance and take the win. 
Congrats to them as well as another huge congrats to 4039 great friends of 3015 here. We got the double gold cling bling with another chairman's award. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of gold gold going on around here. It's in a lot. All right, over to Mar. Um, <laughs> so the, we'll start with the Springside Chestnut Hill event. Um, so it took place in Philly, and we saw 32 teams take uh, the field at the Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. 225 Tech Fire was the number one seed and selected 2590 and 423, but were upset in the quarterfinals by the number eight alliance of 204, 1218, and 5407. In the finals, we saw number three alliance of 4342. 103 and 5420 take down the number eight alliance for the win in three matches. So very, it was a big whirlwind at this event. So congrats to Demon Robotics, Cybersonics, and 5420 Velocity, as well as 433, the Firebirds. I'm on the District Chairman's Award. Um, and uh, 1218 Vulcan Robotics and the Silver Silver Cling Bling for taking home that finalist, as well as the District Engineering Inspiration Award. So moving on over to the other event that was happening in Mar this weekend, which was Bridgewater. They saw 28 teams compete but it was a New England district team who took the number one seed. And that team was 2168, the Aluminum Falcons, who already have a district win on the books this season by taking the win at the Southeast uh, Mass District event earlier this year. Aluminum Falcons showed off uh, the robot with a ranking score average of 2.0, um, and so they selected 303, the test team, and 752, the Chargers, to their alliance. They would play number eight in the number five alliances before playing the number six alliance in the finals. Uh, the experience of their dominance showed in the finals, and that number one alliance took the win in two matches with scores of 313 and 310. Congrats on the win, and congrats on the, to 1676, the Pascal Pioneers, on yet another district chairman's award. So congrats to them, a great team there. I thought that was really interesting, a New England district team. I uh, took the number one seed there. I think they were the only non-Mar team that was there. I, I love when they invade other ones because we talked about that last <laughs> week with uh, that Indiana event where yeah. three, out of, three out of the six teams were from Michigan. It's yeah. always cool to see. I don't know how local teams feel about it. But. I know. But I, I don't know. If you're going to travel outside if you're gonna travel outside of your district, why don't you go play at a regional? Or is it just cheaper? It's, cheap, it's cheaper, but it doesn't count for anything. By what? Oh, by a what? Thousand, like a thousand, a thousand versus four thousand. Oh, that's all it is for them to go down there is a thousand. Yeah, most of the intra district plays are, are are grand if I remember correctly. No, I guess so. Sure. All right, Tyler, on over to Central Illinois. All right, Central Illinois, bring in some powerhouse teams, and what was uh, probably not really unexpected to most twenty forty one the Roboteers would take the number one seed with an average ranking score of two point three. <laughs> And it's like the number two seed Mars Wars. And now for a third straight year, which I have to ask Will about three years in a row, they have picked 2220 Blue Twilight on their way back as the last pick. Uh, this event was light out for the number one Red Alliance in their second quarterfinal match. Uh, they set a world high unpenalized score. But get this 506 points. 506. So 40 KPA bonus, uh, four rotor bonus, no penalties. 506 points, not too shabby. Number one alliance would go into the finals to face a number two alliance of 58, 47, 21, 69, and 42, 41. That's how they say it, sorry. Uh, the first match wasn't even close as Reddit took the win with scores of 360 to 160. Finals two, the blue alliance did play some solid defense and held the red alliance to just 27 KPA and 332 points but just could not muster enough offensive power. This is the number one Red Alliance who take the regional, 332 to 305. Double cling bling at this event. Chairman's Award going to 2169 King Tech and the Entering Inspiration Award going to 2220 Blue Twilight. So, Will, you and I were both at this event in a couple different capacities uh, for this. I, I was emceeing the event, um, and obviously you're there with the uh, the Roboteers who have an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal event, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Felt a lot better from Hub City, I'm sure, just a couple of weeks ago. So why don't yeah, you tell us a little bit? Yeah, right. So why don't, why don't you tell us a little about your experience at at the Central Illinois Regional? Uh, give us all the tips and tricks on how we can build a kick-ass robot like yours. <laughs> well, I, I think the best tip is just find Blue Twilight and pick them as your third robot. Um, <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> um, first off, uh, Central Illinois is always one of the best uh, run events, I think, that, that we have ever kind of experienced um, kind of year after year. Um, it's just run extremely smoothly. Um, hats off to all those volunteers. They're all amazing people. Um, 
Bradley campus is awesome. And I'm not just saying that because it's my alma mater, but uh, um, it's just a great place to have an event. Um, it's it's really just, just kind of an awesome experience. Um, the event is always a, one of those events that's, um, it's deceptively deep. Um, a lot of people kind of look at, and maybe they catch like three or four or five of the numbers that jump out at the top. And some of the other teams kind of go unnoticed a little bit. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's fair, but that happens all over the place. Um, but Central Illinois is really one of those places where a lot of really good teams, um, it's kind of compete in the same place. And then you end up and usually do it again for the most part, a couple weeks later at Midwest in Chicago. <laughs> and so then you get yeah. to see teams that take two, uh, kind of try to do it again. And then it's even more competitive, which is kind of crazy to see. So uh, Midwest this year is going to be even crazier because then you've got teams like, you know, Bomb Squad and Titanium showing up, you know, and Ponage mm -hmm. will be there. So awesome. um, that'll that'll be a, that'll be a good event week five for sure. So two things I want to talk about with you is one, um, I, just briefly, I'd like to have you talk a little about your driver training, what you do, because one of the things I think that attributes to your guys' success is that obviously I'm sort of driving that helps for this, right? But uh, your your drivers know how to negotiate around defense and pretty easily too. I mean, there's times that, you know, that last finals match, there's some tough D for that, right? And, uh, you know, we saw your score a little bit lower, but overall, I think that's one of the things I've noticed from you guys is that uh, you have trained your drivers very well to handle defense. We know that they're going to shut down one of the lanes and you guys seem to just be able to either go through that in the right way, or you make the smart decision to go around. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, we actually do quite a bit of training with our drivers. Um, Andrew, that little savant of a driver that we have, um, is amazing. He's got a lot of natural talent for it, a lot of natural ability for it. Um, I can't say enough about that kid. Um, last year he was a freshman and a freshman driver taking you all the way to the world championship. That's nothing to, to sneeze at at all. Um, back this year, he wasn't using swerve drive last year. So this is kind of his first experience with swerve. Um, so again, he kind of has a natural kind of aptitude for it. Um, but we also drill him quite a bit. <laughs> um, we send him through, you know, just trying different cycle times and that type of thing. That was kind of where we started. Um, and then since hub city, one of the main things we noticed is that, um, he was having issues um, when you would kind of go through the center of the field. So you would kind of go into those blind spots, um, either behind the, the airship or airships, if you're all the way back trying to cycle behind every everything. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that one, we, we got him used to some field centric driving with the swerve. So he could activate that going through the blind spots. So he wouldn't lose track of the robot, which way it was facing and all that type of stuff. Uh, but at the same time, just give him some more tools to work with to kind of navigate the field and get around the other robots. Um, and so what we did leading into CIR is we busted out one of our other Swerve robots and had Swerve on Swerve violence going on on the practice field. <laughs> swerve playing defense on Swerve. And some of the things that people overlook with Swerve Drive is its ability to be one of the most nastiest defensive robots on the field because oh, yeah. you cannot you cannot get around them if you're playing intelligently. So having Swerve get in the way of Swerve was the best way to kind of train him. And so as soon as he started seeing anything that was a tank drive or a mechanum drive or, or anything along those lines, he just kind of gave space, spun around, um, weaved in and out of the lanes and, and found his spots. So um, that's what we were trying to do. And, and again, he's got some natural ability that, that very few people I think on this planet have that he just picks up on it <laughs> super quick. And uh, uh, he just made that thing you know, hum all weekend long. And I, I still cannot believe that he managed in that 506 match to go from a complete standstill when the ropes were dropped on our end of the field, sitting by our rope. And he's like, Nope, I can go one more gear right, man, <laughs> all the way over. Yeah. He went all the way over, zip bound there, grabbed that gear, came all the way back, popped the gear on the center and then still hung um, mm -hmm. with two seconds left. So yeah. um, that was absolutely incredible. Our, our film crew was uh, joking that, um, when we've got our own, you know, scouting video that we're watching of that, we lose him in those final 30 seconds because it's like, this is climb time. Where's he going? He's galloping down the field. <laughs> and uh, so we zoom back out. We're just like, all right, well, that's Andrew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's gotten to the point where we don't even uh, get surprised by some of that stuff anymore. And that's that's a great luxury to have for sure. Well, and one of the great things, too, I'm sure from a coaching perspective is that then the coach can worry about the alliance in general. It doesn't have to worry about just the driver for something like that. And that's a huge benefit yes. to have. Yes. Um, and he speak. does not get rattled at all either. Like that is, that is something that's really kind of underrated as well, where, 
he's just super cool and as a cucumber the entire match um, the entire event um, even when you had him out there dancing to get our standard back he, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was super embarrassed by it, but uh, it was all in good fun uh, but even that was like the only thing that rattled him for a little bit and I just kind of smacked him on the arm and got his head back oh, in the did, game I, did I rattle like, him before the match I feel really bad now yeah, yeah, a little bit, but he was he was seconds, fine. But... He was fine. He's not gonna forget that thing again. It's night. It's recorded, so everybody can watch it. All right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, hey, you know, just a couple other things too uh, to mention. Uh, your your the drive coach uh, uh, Matt on your team got the uh, Woody Flowers finals award. So huge congrats to him to him on that. And I know you guys have had some changes in your program. So awesome to see him uh, step up and take the reins and get that Woody Flowers award right away. Fantastic, man. Yep, um, yep, very reserved. One thing, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the Blue Twilight a little bit. Uh, not in regards, you know, we, you guys have picked them for years in a row, and I'm sure, you know, you have a good rapport with them, that sort of thing. But uh, one of the things that Blue Twilight was missing coming into the Elims is that they were actually able to shoot a few balls in auto, which is nuts to be able to pick up as the last pick. Uh, they were able to do some gear shuttling. They obviously played some lights out defense, but their climber had some issues, right? Um, so you guys actually cheesecake yeah. their climber going to Elims. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, so that was one of the things that we were kind of a um, little bit behind the curve on going into week one at Hub City is we kind of knew that cheesecake climbers were going to be important. If you can't get three robots climbing, you're not going to be able to win. Um, we just didn't have time really um, to get that ready for for Hub City. So coming out of Hub City, that was one of the things that we you know had our mechanical team uh, kind of focus on. And uh, we basically had a six pound climber in a box, uh, essentially, that's like, no matter what you've got on your robot, here's six pounds, find it, plug this climber in and you're good to go. Um, Blue Twilight uh, was in a situation which we were hoping to see where the robots that were in that spot, in that picking spot for us, actually had climbers. They just weren't, uh, uh, weren't as good as they could be without a couple modifications. So. What we ended up and noticed is that they were kind of trying to simultaneously use their intake roller for balls also as their roller for climbing and there was two sims on that thing uh so we basically just said hey let's take this roller out of our cheesecake climber slide it right on your roller take those other ball or take those other wheels off um hook it up and let's let's test it and go um we basically gave them a rope and a bar with with velcro kind of wrapped around it uh just a smaller version of ours basically that's on our robot um, and we, you know, got him three pounds lighter, um, <laughs> after it was all said and done, got him out on the, the practice, uh, practice field and it zipped right up. Wow. They just kind of looked at it like, uh, oh, well, this seems like it's going to work. And we are like, yep, yep. Let's get out on the field. Cause we're getting cued right now. And, uh, <laughs> then we proceeded to, uh, <laughs> go out there. And, uh, after that first match, we were joking and it was probably not that funny because it was probably true in uh in an hour they were turned into the best climber in the building yeah so, uh, yeah 100 percent, um, man that climber was fast as hell absolutely yeah it, it was glad to see we were actually worried that they had two sims on it and it was going to become a uh, an 811 situation um where they were going to snap that rope on that right? davit <laughs> um so we were trying to figure out if there was ways that we would need to kind of do something in their software or help them out um to try and you know tone that down a little bit uh, but it turns out we never got to that point. We did have them swap ropes once because um, we were a little bit nervous that it looked a little bit beaten up after I think it was like the second or third match. Um, but that was that was basically about it. Awesome, man. Well, congratulations to you guys once again. Uh, you're already qualified for World Champs. Actually, a cool thing at that event, too, is uh, the entire finalist alliance qualified. Uh, do the yeah. wild cards. So we had oh, that's uh, awesome. yeah, tons of teams going as well. So congrats to you. Um, speaking about uh, Team 811 or 118, as some of us know them as, uh, <laughs> we're going to move on to Lone Star here, uh, which will be another st star-studded event in Texas. Uh, 118 of Robonauts taking the number one C with an average ranking score. I'll uh, get this. Average ranking score 2.5, and they lost two matches. Wow. Wow. Uh, so they'd go on to select a team that they lost uh, just two weeks ago. Uh, 1477 Texas Torque and round out the alliance with uh, 5526 uh, T-Cats. Number one alliance, absolutely clean house. Every single match, uh, they played earning 40 KPA bonus in every match and winning every match by an average score of 140 points. Like, that's nuts. Uh, and face the number two alliance with 3847, 5829, and 3997 and sweep both matches with scores of 379 and 255 and 330 
to 155. Double gold cling bling going to Texas Torque, 1477. And another cling bling going to their alliance partner, 5526 TCATS, with the Engineering Inspiration Award win. So a couple of cling blings there, guys. Uh, here, have all the medals. <laughs> yes. Hey, take them all. <laughs> That's cool. All right. So I'm going to move over and talk about the Tech Valley Regional. As long as I've been home to several teams from around New York State, but with Tech Valley being on the same weekend as Spring Lakes and Greater Pittsburgh, which is also a popular destination for a lot of New York teams, uh, the 36 team event was small, but the competition was fierce. After 12 matches, it was a non New York team, 195, the Cyber Knights, who were the number one seed. They would add uh, 20 of the Rocketeers and 64-59 and advance to the semifinals for getting upset with the number four alliance of 333, 27-91, and 59-52, who would go on to win the event by defeating the number two alliance of 45-08, 36-24, and 44-58. So congrats to the number four alliance as well as 30-44 Ox before, who picked up their first ever regional chairman's award. So I'm going to head all the way across the country. A featured event of mine this week is the inaugural San Francisco Regional. 41 teams sought to capture that first gold medal. Two world powerhouses, 971 and 254, took their machines to the city by the bay. And wouldn't you know it, after 12 matches, those two robots sat on top with 254 taking the pole position. 254 wasted a little time picking 971 first overall, and they would add 4990 to create a formidable number one alliance. Uh... They faced a little challenge on the way to the finals, so we'll look to the other side of the bracket for the rest of the story of this event. Favorite on that side, of course, would be the number two alliance of 604 Quicksilver, 3256, and 2035. Like their counterparts on the other side of the bracket, uh, they faced a little challenge from their opponents, winning each and every match uh, pretty comfortably, and would advance to the finals to set up a 1v2 showdown. In match one, the number one alliance scored 39 kill pressures of kilopascals of pressure in autonomous, uh, one of the highest, highest I've seen. Set up a dramatic but slight win for the number one alliance as they only completed two rotors uh, using that KPA bonus to offset that third rotor and give them a slim 354 to 330 win. A little drama in finals match two occurred as the, the match began without 971 on the field. Mechanical issues had them sidelined, uh, but with the win in their pocket, instead of calling it a backup bot, which would prevent 971 from playing in any potential third match, they played a robot down and managed to even still eke out the win with a score of 274 to 255. So really an interesting way to end the inaugural uh, San Francisco Regional. And congrats to the number one alliance as well as 2905 from Turkey, who picked up the regional chairman's award. Oh, very so, cool. Turkey team picking up chairman's. That's nuts. By the way, that's yeah. awesome. Really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we have, oh, that was the worst thing I could have done. There we go. <laughs> I'll just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I we determined Mike is colorblind. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Two more events here to recap, and then we'll move on to our previews. Uh, so I'm going to talk about FLR that Justin just talked about. And f I mean, you get for those of you that maybe for are not familiar with our area, this was a huge deal that FLR, Tech Valley, and Pittsburgh were all on the same weekend. Um, it really made some hard decisions for teams to choose where to go. So, um, so the, so FLR Finger Lakes Regional is the hometown regional for Justin and I since 2005 when it first began, and it went off again this past weekend at the Rochester Institute of Technology. So, 49 teams played 10 matches, and there were lots of teams, uh, many and most who I mentioned last week who had their time the number one seed, uh, like 191, 1507, 3015, amongst others. I think the number one seed was 1507, the Warlocks, who are always a solid team in this area who build great robots. Their first pick was 340, Greater Rochester Robotics, who got lots of attention on Chief Delphi um, from the likes of Karthik, Mike Corsetto, um, Adam Hurd, uh, for just being a purely ground, uh, uh, or excuse me, a gear robot and climber. Um, their third robot... Uh, so the first pick was 340, and their, their third robot was 271, the Mechanical Marauders. Uh, meeting the number one alliance in the finals um, was the next favorite alliance. The number two alliance, uh, led by Hall of Fame and founding team 191, the X-Cats. They picked the number... Uh, they picked 3015 Ranger Robotics, clearly the best fuel scoring robot at the regional, putting up anywhere between low 20s to maybe even a little bit into the 30s of KPA and auto during a good match. Um, there were some issues with the hoppers at FLR, um, but that's a completely different story. The third robot.
bought on this alliance was thirty-seven ninety-nine Electric Fire. Uh, though being favorites by bumper color and alliance number only, the number one alliance just couldn't string together two wins uh, in the finals and couldn't beat the boiler pressure of the number two alliance to take the win. Uh, congrats to the number two alliance for taking home the gold as well as the thirty fifteen. Uh, on the gold silver cling bling for taking the engineering inspiration award and the 1511 rolling thunder on the regional chairman's award. So um, as many of you know, this is Justin's team. Uh, Justin, anything you want to add quickly about FLR before we move on? 3015 is just to clarify. 3015 yeah, 30 15 is, 15. yes. Yeah. 3015 is. Um, you know, it was a great event for us. We were really excited to, to be able to let people see our robot and um, the autonomous mode is where we decided early on we really wanted to excel. And even though we weren't quite where we wanted to be, um, as Mike mentioned, having to fight the hoppers at FR for a day and a half was certainly frustrating. Um, but it was just a, ended up being a great event for us. Really happy to get the win. And everyone keeps, you know, keeps kind of saying fuel doesn't matter, fuel doesn't matter, fuel is undervalued. Well, fuel won us that regional. Um, did. So we were really excited about that. We're really excited to compete at Buckeye um, in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's been a great season for us so far, and we're looking to keep it going. Just can't say enough about 191, the X-Cats, and 3799 being just incredible alliance partners. Um, they were just – everyone was smooth, consistent, um, and it was really a, it was really a great event. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to 340 um, as a team that I mentored for 10 years, Mike as well. Um, you know, we've been against them in the finals for a few, the past few FORs, um, which is always a pain having to, having to go against um, a friend that, you know, I'm still have a lot of friends on and very close with. So that was a bit of a bummer. But like it happened earlier, um, because of wild cards and all that stuff, the entire finalist alliance also qualified for the world championship. So that was pretty cool. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned 340 because I, I wasn't sure if you guys were just being like, you know, super off. I'm like, you got to mention you guys were both on 340 because that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's so many so many friends going against each other, you know, like last year championship. Oh, sorry, let's move on. My bad. All right. <laughs> Will and I are still very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. we're all half champs. That's yes. right. We're all half champs. Yeah. There you go. Half yeah, champ. Oh boy. Enough. It, see, it came from Robo Tears, now it's official. It's all That's good. right. All right. So uh I think it's our last uh, last regional, isn't it? Yes. So uh we're talking about Greater Kansas City Regional. 60 teams taking the field here at this event. Some star-studded teams. 624, 935, 1730, 1986, 1987, and 3528. Uh, we knew that after Hub City with their semifinal exit uh, with 118 that Kryptonite was hungry for more. And many uh, jaws also hit the floor when you saw 1986's robot reveal video with that incredible, incredible autonomous coming out. Um, and Justin, I'm going to get to that comment you made about fuel mattering in just a little bit here. It would be a team known to many in the local area, uh, but not quite uh, to the larger FRC world. 3528 up next, taking the number one seed. Uh, and actually, I know of them pretty well because uh, one of our previous uh, teachers ended up moving in and having their kid on that team. Some pretty cool story. Uh, they pick up uh, up next and pick up 1986 and some team 23 on their way back. And things were looking great. Number one Red Alliance scored 40 KPA bonus in every elimination match that they were in, every single one. Uh, and perhaps a question that uh, might be answered, in my opinion, that balls don't matter. Well, let's welcome in the number four Lions, 1987 Bronco Bots, 624 Kryptonite, and 5801 CTC Inspire. Scoring two rotors in auto, the Blue Alliance was able to win the match with all four rotors engaged and only two robots ready for takeoff. That's match one. Surely match number two would be different, but for red, it was not. Number one, Red Alliance would only engage two rotors, and once again, the number four Blue Alliance would engage all four rotors and knock out the number one alliance to move on to the semifinals uh, to face the number seven alliance of 49, 59, 17, 10, and 935. First finals match was a bit closer with tough defense by the number seven Blue Alliance, preventing the number four Red Alliance from engaging all four rotors, but 1710 for blue was just not even engaged or climber at the end, and red took the first match 288 to 277, thanks to an autonomous rotor score. Match number two in the finals was all about the number four red alliance. Two rotors engaged in auto allowed the red alliance to score their fourth rotor with 20 seconds left and take a huge victory with a score of 494 to 235. Chairman's would go to 1713 driven, and entering inspiration was earned by 1710. Irvonics Revolution. So I do see somebody mentioned that uh, somebody in 1987 said they got disabled partway through the final. So that's unfortunate. But uh, I want to go back to Kansas City here and talk about that, Justin, because you mentioned with fuel mattering. And 
in Kansas City, there was kind of a different story that was told yeah. um, where we saw the uh, number four Red Alliance knock out the number one Red Alliance, which I'm sure was clearly the favorite team titanium on it. Um, even though titanium got KPA, they got 40 KPA in every single Elon match they were in. The number four Red Alliance was able to get the four rotors going in different matches. And it, it seems to me that fuel just didn't matter because they got the four rotors going. So I guess I'll ask you first, and I'd like to get Will and Mike's comment on, uh, you know, I was 100% in camp, camp fuel saying fuel is always going to matter and it will make that few points difference. But here we saw a regional where arguably you have one of the best fuel scoring robots in the field and it didn't make a difference. Yeah, so for us, it was a, a just a strategic thing. Um, we knew that 340 was without question the best gear about at the event. Um, you know, 315 and 340, we share a practice field. I see them all the time. It's not even close. Um, 1507 also is pretty good gear bot um, and their, their alliance partner could add a few. Four rotors for them was certainly a possibility. We knew that if we could get a little bit of fuel, um, we could match them at three rotors. Uh, that we could, and uh, you know, 150 and 150 with the climb, that we could, our little bit of fuel would be the advantage. So our strategy was quickly, you know, an autonomous, whatever fuel we had, that was the tiebreaker, get our six gears, defend against the fourth rotor, and make sure that, that we all climbed. It worked out for us. I think it's just a strategic decision that somehow the number one alliance felt that either, you know, the number, I don't know what alliance it was, the number one alliance wasn't, or the number seven, four? Four. Uh, Titan Greater Kansas City four. Yeah, the number four alliance wasn't going to be able to get it. We also don't know if there was a little, uh, you know, strategic workings on there. Like uh, Norm from Team Appreciate talked last week. Maybe they didn't put all their rotors, you know, starting spinning immediately. Maybe they waited till the last second, and the number one alliance thought that they didn't get four rotors. There's a lot of different strategic things that could have happened. Um, but so it's certainly a little bit of a situationally dependent. But I'd like to get Will's uh, take on it as a another very strong fuel uh, alliance. So I, I actually watched those semifinal matches back once I once I heard that, that Titanium got um, upset because I think I, most people thought that they were going to have a, kind of a, uh, not an easy pass lane because this game is so unpredictable with climbs and everything, but basically they expected to see them in the finals. They haven't been not in the finals of an event since mm -hmm. God knows how long. Um, so I watched them. I've got friends on 624. I've got friends on 1986. Um, I honestly think that defending four rotors, um, I guess, probably wasn't done properly. I think if uh, 1986 would kind of have a rewind, they might have might have played it a little bit differently. Um, but at the same time, I also know that 624, they did do the stack of pancake strategy with the gears. So they basically had that last rotor stacked up um, behind the... Uh, behind the tower back there and they didn't even spin their third one up until they had everything for the fourth one. So it really put the uh, pressure on uh. the other side to keep track of the gear count um, yep. when they were getting close. So that's the way to do it. Um, so you really make sure that you've got someone behind that glass, keeping track of how many of those yellow little discs get up there. Yeah. And the perfect person to do that is the, the left out human player. Right. So, yep. mm -hmm. That's the, you know, for us, they were the, they were the gear counter and the gear coach. They were just looking for gears on the ground that we could steal and keep a track of how many gears were being put up. One other thing um, I just want to mention too, I'm sorry, Mike, um, no, is that sorry. another thing with the number four lions, they only had two climbers, by the way. Is that right? I think that's right. Isn't that for this event? Or am I thinking a different one? I could be wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, sorry. I'm looking. There, there was one event where it, maybe it was water for, I don't know that there was uh uh, that a team uh, only had two climbers and they ended up winning an event. So, yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I, I can't remember what event it was, but I think they were also ones that were cycling for four rotors too. So that kind of offsets that lack of a climber. Yeah. Cool. Well, it does it. All right. So week four is the busiest week in FRC this season with 28 events coming up. Uh, we can't look at all of them, but we do have a little bit of in-depth look at some of them. So, Mike, what do you have for us? All right, so I'm going to kind of just take a quick look at Seneca in the Mar District. So coming up next week, 
uh, we'll see this event go down. Um, with teams of interest being just a couple being 1218 Vulcan Robotics coming off their finals appearance last weekend at Springside Chestnut Hill event. 708 Headers Robotics they had a semifinals outing at Springside Chestnut Hill event. Uh, 1640 Sabotage, who had also a semifinals outing, but at the West Town event. 365 Mo, they were finalists at West Town. Um, so a lot of teams who have already competed this year and a lots of teams that are still looking for that first district win. So I think a lot of eyes will be kind of on this event um, internally in Mar. Um, really to kind of try to get those points for the district championship. And uh, I've kind of been watching Mar um, kind of throughout the season so far. So I think this is kind of a lot. There's going to be a lot on the line at the Seneca event this uh, this weekend. So uh, excited to see how that plays out. And uh, from here, we'll go over to the Iowa Regional. So there's a lot of regionals that have deep rosters, and uh, many will look to Midwest in Week 5 for that area to be the best regional in the Midwest. But Iowa might have the, be the best Midwest regional comprised of all Midwestern teams. Many teams are top contenders uh, to this event, and some have already have another event of their belt. You have 525 Sport Dogs, 876 Thunder Robotics, 967 Iron Lions, 1094 Channel Cats, 2512 Duluth East Daredevils. Uh, up next, which we just talked about, Team Neutrino, Lutheran Roboteers, and many more. And, of course, my favorite, the rookie team. And I think they're going to win instantly because their name. It's fun. Fun. 66-30 well, <laughs> is going to win. That's my prediction right there. Uh, right. Might, many might not give Iowa a close look, but if you dive a bit more, you might find a really amazing event with some amazing play this weekend. So check out Iowa. All right. I'm going to take a look at water, water, water. Lou, Lou, Lou. So all eyes will be on 2056 as they compete for the first time in 2017. They'll be joined by a longtime friend Alliance Partners 1114 and other Canadian power will look to have a say with how this district event is decided. Those teams include 3683 Team Dave, 4476 Waffles, 4525 and some others. So Waterloo is a great, great event. Um, if you have a chance to, to, to visit and go to that event, I certainly encourage you to. Um, but 2056 and 1114 are certainly going to look uh, to add another chapter to their storied history together at the Waterloo district event i mean 2056 and 1114 are so, like so waterloo but karthik won't be there that's kind yeah. of a sad a sad story but but uh that'll be great all right, so we're getting uh, close to the FRC Top 25. We want to just thank our guest, Will Barnacle, for an amazing job. Just thank you for all your contributions uh, um, to the show and all your insight. Um, so I know you mentioned that 24 maybe still had some World Champion t-shirts available. Is that so? Uh, yes, we do. And they, there's a very select number of them <laughs> available. <laughs> yeah. um, so basically how I figured that we could kind of do this is if you just uh, – PM me on Chief Delphi. It's going to be a first come, first serve basis. I cannot guarantee that sizes that you're looking for will be available, um, but we can basically work something out where you can basically stop by our pit in St. Louis um, and pick them up. Um, I think twenty dollars is what we were thinking um, for them, but uh, I can I can double check and verify that. Um, so yeah, uh, very few left, um, but uh, we can uh, we can see what we can do. Very cool. Can you can we bring that up on the screen again? Can we see that one more time? This one. Yeah, let's take another look at that. That's pretty sweet. I, I love. I'm, I'm a big minimalist on the on graphics. I love that that one color view. That's really cool. Sorry, yeah. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had your own minimalist view, Justin. No, that's not what he's laughing at. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> look at the Skype chat. Even better. Uh, no, that's what he's laughing at. <laughs> Sorry. Fantastic. Sometimes oh, I just yeah. sometimes I just rub my finger where my world championship ring could have been. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what. You, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, Justin, if you gave us the white silhouettes, we could put them on the back. Yeah, fair enough. enough. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, before we send Will off and transfer the FRC top 25, uh, let's bring Christine in and check out her progress on the 2008-11-14 uh, robot. It is sweet looking. So let's check take a look at that. You go. What, what's the text say on there? Oh, so I was talking to Karthik today. It's uh, it's Kanye West lyrics from a great song that makes me think of most of their robots. And I asked him, do you think it'd be appropriate for this robot? And he said, absolutely. So. Fantastic. So uh, it looks like you got uh, most of the robot coloring done. So it's time to film the the letters. Anything else that's gonna be added on there? Um, I'm not sure. I'll probably add some white highlights at some point. But um, this robot was pretty simple. If you look at all the photos, like they had a nice, clean, simple design, yeah. and it worked amazingly yes it did so fantastic so uh don't forget if you want to have a chance uh to win this uh you have to either follow our channel 
Uh, or if you want even more chances to win, so if you follow, you get one ticket. If you subscribe either for free through Twitch Prime or only for a few bucks a month, subscribe to our channel. You're going to get five tickets to uh, enter in for this drawing. We're going to be giving that away closer to the end of the show. Uh, Christine's going to think of a uh, magic uh, phrase that we'll type in, and don't don't spoil it yet, but we'll uh, we'll have that in. So when that time comes, all you got to do is type that in. Make sure you either followed or subscribed. If for some reason you're not, usually Nightbot catches it, but if you're not followed, Anyway, and we're just going to re-roll again. That's what happened last week for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, because Tyler doesn't know how to control Nightbot, apparently. Uh, but yeah, take, I mean, that, that drawing, if somebody put right in chat, I told you, like a hot pro says that that drawing is MFD. So <laughs> absolutely agree. That, that, is, that is awesome. So, and you, you get the whole thing. It's not even like you're, you're getting an image copy, which is cool enough by itself. You could have as your background for your cell phone or for your desktop, uh, but you're actually getting the actual drawing that Christine is doing. So that is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. So, and Christine, uh, where can, uh, if people also want to check these out, you do have an Etsy page that you can go on and check some of these out at, right? Yeah, definitely. If you just go to um, Etsy.com and put in wordplay all day, you can go, you know, put in an order for your own custom robot. It's a great thing to have hanging up on your wall. Um, you can put in your record for the year of your favorite robot. And yeah, I'll have plenty of time to do it after April too. So if you want to wait till yeah. after camps, <laughs> give me something to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, and you get some of these. I, I bought a couple of these myself. Uh, but what are these? Mostly like two bucks to get some awesome backgrounds that are custom drawn for uh, first. You got to love that. Yeah. Oh, sure. All righty. Uh, Will Barnickel, thank you so much once again for being on. We're going to uh, move on to the FRC top 25. Uh, Will, before we let you go, uh, we got to hear, are you either going to give the, the political answer or what you're truly feeling? Where do you think you're going to land in the top 25 this week, if you do it all? <laughs> you're, uh, you're gonna land well, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, with the the awesome number of uh, amazing teams that are playing this week, I don't think there's any way we can hit the top five. So, um, if we crack the top five, that'll be um, that'll be pretty amazing and exciting for us. Um, but again, anytime we we find our way on this list, it's always great for our students to get that recognition because they work incredibly hard and they worked. They worked their tails off getting ready for CIR, and I'm glad it, it showed um, on the field. So, Fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah, I agree. Big list of competitors this week. We'll get into that. Uh, Will, best luck to you uh, moving in the future. I'm sure we'll talk soon, buddy. Take care. Yep, no problem. Thanks, Will. See you. All right, we'll just reset there. Well, Skype takes a moment to readjust everything. <laughs> yeah. So we got uh, just a reminder. So we do have uh, the 25 top 25 teams this week. We also brought back the top five alliances, which we'll do that during our uh, break for the top 10. Uh, close to 200 votes again this week, a little bit less than last week, but uh, we're getting up there. Uh, the good news is I think we had to delete less votes this week, so that's usually a plus <laughs> from people typing the same team name for all of them or trying to circumvent yeah. the rules. But um, yeah, thank you to everybody who voted. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, the more votes we get, the more usually uh, wider pull results we get for something like that. And it's great to get all these teams recognized each week, Mike and Justin. Yeah, for sure. And I'm really excited about this top 25. Week three, week four is really when, uh, you know, we start seeing these top 10 teams kind of emerge um, and start playing. And um, teams are starting to adjust and change, you know, strategies, change mechanisms. And it's just a really exciting time for the top 25. Uh, first couple of weeks, obviously, there's good teams that have played. But um, it's just there's that much more. And we're seeing more of the game and how it evolves and all that. And it's just a... Um, it's fun. It's fun talking about these teams when we get to this point kind of in the season. Not that it's never fun, but it's uh, just a little bit more fun, I think. Yeah, especially because like, it seems if you know many of them have competed more than once. And, the, you know, week one and week two, it's so hectic. We don't get to watch a lot of events. But now these teams, we've seen them a couple of times. I mean, they're really starting to find their groove in many in many cases. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cool, uh, cool time. It really is. A lot of good teams to talk about tonight, too. Absolutely. Let's start it out. Is Nick ready? Because we still got the other one. Yeah, there was a couple of weird camera things, but it will be ready in just a moment. Justin, you, I think you should start the first one out. Actually, is my team to to at least announce the team number for. Right. That's it. So are we All ready? Right, I think we're ready. Yep, I think All we're right. good. Go. The 25th team uh, this week in FC Top 25 is team number 3015. 
<clears throat> so from Spenceport, New York, and Spenceport High School, it's Ranger Robotics, an overall record of 13-3, and three, and they were the winners of the Finger Lakes Regional. So Ranger Robotics is uh, now part of the 40 KPA club with the highest auto KPA um, in the low 30s, if I'm not mistaken, right, Justin? I don't know what your... Anyways. For what, but I'm sorry. For auto KPA, what was your highest? Uh, 36. Oh, wow, dude. Oh, wow. sick. Love it. So they can then they can go off and finish the KPA in auto. They can cycle gears, and they got a good climb at the end of the match. They were the second overall pick at uh, the Finger Lakes Regional this past weekend and won the regional thanks for their fuel scoring capabilities. Congrats. Uh, good luck at Buckeye. Justin, any final thoughts thanks. before we move on? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> no, just really proud of our team this weekend. Um, we were... You know, we were the number one seed for the first um, half of Friday. Had lost a couple matches. We were kind of down, fighting the hoppers on the field. I mean, it just wasn't, you know, there was a lot of uh, reasons to be down and upset. But our team really pulled through. Um, and, you know, and we ended up with uh, the best feeling in the world. So we're excited. Yeah, like I really think that was a hard decision for 1507, the number one seed, because you guys were like starting to show a little more consistency with your with your fuel scoring, but maybe wasn't quite sure whether or not to take the risk and in 340, you know, having just that, um, you know, really good cycler gear score. Um, but as like, as eliminations were going on, it's like, you know what? I really think this number two Alliance is a little bit stronger just because you could do that in auto. So it was really, really fun to watch you guys this weekend and, and congrats again. Thank you. Hey, congrats, man. Thank you. All right. Moving on to 24. We have team number 20 from, it just says New York. New York. I know that's what it says on Blue Lines, but they're like more from the Albany region. I thought. I thought it was like Clifton or something. Oh yeah. Anyway, that's where it was. But uh, Shen High School with the Rocketeers, over a record of eleven five and one, they're the semifinalists at the New York Tech Valley Regional. Sorry, <laughs> usually you take over there. The Rocketeers have been a notable team in the MC New York region the past several years. They continue to impress the voters this year. Uh, ranked second, they were taken first overall by the number one alliance, yet fall in the semis to the number four alliance. Um, but take nothing away from 20, they built another great machine, and they compete again this week, going back-to-back -back at the Hudson Valley Regional. So good luck to them as they move on in their season. Dude, I was laughing because I felt like you just skipped over <laughs> their town <laughs> or their high school. But I, what I heard was just like Shenan High School. It's Shenandoah, but they just call it Shen. Oh, they do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't. I didn't hear it wrong then. Shen High School. I got gotcha. you. All right. So you're. I'm yeah, good. Man. You're good. Twenty third this week is team number thirty five twenty eight. From Kansas City, Missouri, it, a Kansas City homeschooler group, it's up next with an overall record of 11-2. and two. They were the semifinalists at the Greater Kansas City Regional. So up next in the robot can score gear and auto and cycles gears and climbs at the end. Uh, this was their recipe for success as they went 9-0 and up, um, and seated first at the Greater <laughs> Kansas City Regional. After getting through finals, uh, with breaking the 400-point mark, they lost the next two matches in the semifinals. Uh, they play again at the Iowa Regional as they search for a regional win. So, but congrats to them, and uh, welcome to the top 25. I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've talked about their team. So that's 35-28 uh, up next. They might have... I have a feeling they were on a couple of years ago. I don't remember. Could have been. Yeah, they were. Not, in the, not recently, though. No, yeah, de definitely not. Like like I said, uh, I've known of them because of a former member of, my, of uh, Wave Robotics uh, actually going over to that team, and they've had really good success the last uh, three, four years. So it's good to see that they're starting to get recognition uh, on a much larger scale. So congratulations. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then moving on to our 22nd ranked team, it's uh, 3847. From Houston, Texas, St. Nanus Academy and Jesuit College Prep School, it's Spectrum. Over a record of 24, 11, and 1, they're the finalists at the Hub City and Lone Star Regionals. Spectrum gets uh, their alliance up early by delivering a gear in auto. They have four gear pickup, which also scores gears very quickly. Two finalist appearances can be tough to swallow, but they have one more chance to qualify. I'm, I'm surprised they have it. Maybe they have with wild cards. Uh, one more chance to get the win, rather, at the Alamo Regional. So good luck to team at 3847 Spectrum. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a team we talk about a lot. And, uh, you know, just kind of getting those two finalist appearances so far this season. Um, it's got to be hard. But they got. Did you, know, the did you say they haven't qualified yet? I'm not sure if they qualified. I don't. Yeah, they, they, they got. Uh, they got. Oh, okay. I was gonna say they did get engine inspiration. Yeah, the city. but just. Oh, okay. I mean, for for being Spectrum, from being Texas, obviously this isn't what they want. Yeah. You know. So. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Two two finalists in EI. Oh uh, yeah. The quality well, award. That's not too bad. Blah blah blah. Whatever. <laughs> no, it's not bad, but it's I'll not a win. 
you know. Yeah, that's no, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Whatever, dude. Just let us do our thing. All right. <laughs> you can't do that because then it'll all fall apart. It will for sure. All right, buddy, go ahead. All right, the 21st ranked team this week in the FC Top 25 is team number 4039. From Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, Mary Catholic Secondary School, it's Makeshift Robotics. An overall record of 18 and 1. They were winners at the Vic Park Collegiate Event. So, Per Karthik. 4039 is amazing and will only get better. That's a quote. Awesome words right there. So um, the only loss in this year was a, dis- a DQ in the quarterfinals for a tipping that we kind of talked about already. Um, other than that, makeshift shoots and telly up and gets three rotors going, hangs at the end. Uh, they also took home the district chairman's award at this event too. 4039, we talk about them every year because they're always here. Uh, they're just an all-around amazing team. Everybody who comes in contact with them loves them. Yeah. Um, they're so nice. They have they're really have great robots. Remember back in um, two years ago, two years ago they had the um, what were the robots? Name? They had the separate robots like uh, 148 did. Right, Roy, Roy um, G. Biff. Yeah, Roy G. Biff. Thank you. And um, uh, so creative robots. They have an awesome team. They're in. You know, they're always in for uh, chairman's contention. And uh, we'll see them compete at McMaster again before they compete at District Champs. Um, so just can't wait to follow up with them and see how well they do. So uh, I just want to add in, so Makeshift is actually my girlfriend's favorite team, uh, but not just because they have some of the most badass t-shirts in all of first, which are, they're freaking awesome. They like literally stitch together a couple of different t-shirts. Like they have somebody on their team that will like hand stitch these t-shirts together. Uh, but she had a chance to meet them at IRI, I know uh, a year or two ago, and uh, just was absolutely, uh, just loved how how awesome this team was and how, just how cool they were and how, you know, for somebody at the time she was coming in the first, you know, she knew something, but not a whole ton. They kind of took her in and explained a lot of things to her. And that, that was really cool. And she really likes that team now because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're just, you know, we've had a chance to play with them. We won the Finger Lakes Regional with them in 2015. Uh, we won the Rochester Ruckus, our offseason event with them in 2016. They're just incredible people who build great robots. I just can't say enough about them. So speaking of which, it's so funny. We're going through like all of our stuff and kind of going through and trying to get rid of stuff. This was literally sitting right next to me, this little box. My, <laughs> a shirt from Makeshift. Nice. They gave me a shirt in this box. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's so funny. <laughs> it's right there. All right. Where did we leave off here? So moving on to number 20. In another 20 spot is 359. From Waialua, Hawaii. Waialua High School. It's the Hawaiian kids. A record of 26 and 8. Winners of the Palmetto and Greater Pittsburgh Regionals. Making their second of three trips to the continental U.S. The Hawaiian kids came off a, a win at the Palmetto Regional. Looking to make it two in a row for Seamworks. Finishing fourth, they were taken off the board first overall and won the regional in semi or in seven matches uh, after losing their first quarterfinal match. The Hawaiian kids head back home uh, to compete in their hometown regional before heading back to the to the U.S. or the continental U.S. I should say for the first championship. It's another great win for another Hall of Fame team. 359, the Hawaiian kids. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but none of those island, the air, those airline miles for sure. <laughs> right? That, that's all Glenn gets all the competitions. He just has so many frequent flyer miles now. Seriously. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, congrats. Not another another event win for them and for another yeah. amazing Hall of Fame team. Oh. Yep, absolutely. All right, so moving into the top 20, we'll stop here at 19 and talk about 5687. From Portland, Maine, Baxter Academy for Science and Technology. It's the Outliers, an overall record of 29-7-2, and two, and they were the winners at the Granite State District event. So week one, they had won that Granite State event. And look to go two for two this past weekend at the Greater Boston event. Uh, they ranked first, and they won finals match one, but couldn't take the next two matches, and they brought home silver. So they have one more event. Um, maybe they can take their second win. But they have been the number one seed at both of these events so far. So yeah. uh, it just goes to show you that they have a good robot here, and good luck to them. Christine, I'll put you on the spot. Do you have anything to add about 5687, anything that sticks out? Yeah, seeing that robot in person is unreal. They were so fast. The driver was amazing like it was one of the few drivers at that event that could actually navigate defense and really stay focused i know they had a lot of radio issues towards the end which was you know really difficult to watch but you know as soon as their radio reconnected they were back on track and you know scoring gears left and right but it was unreal to watch them this weekend 
cool. Yeah, they're one of those teams that they kind of remind me of uh, 133 last year where they just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, you know, if you weren't a local team, you didn't really know who they are. And now everybody's talking about them. And they have just a, a simple, elegant machine that just gets the job done. Dude, they were an outlier team, man. What can you say? They, yeah, right? They live up to their <laughs> name for sure. All right. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Congrats to them. Thanks, Christine. <clears throat> All right, moving on to our 18th spot, we have Team 340. From Churchville, New York, Churchville Shala High School, it's the Greater Rochester Robotics Team. <laughs> Overall record, uh, 10 and 6. They were the finalists okay, John, at the uh, Finger Lakes Regional. Thanks, man. I, pra- <laughs> I practiced that one a lot. Yeah. Gur released their Pure Gear score climber on Chief Delphi Road this year, and everyone knows the attention they got. As Mike mentioned, Carthic Corsetto, Adam Hurd all chimed in. 340's robot uh, gear pickup is really second to none. They can score so easily. The, the climb is ridiculously fast. Um, being t- taken first over at Finger Lakes was not a surprise to me or anyone else. Um, they advanced through the finals. Where they uh, where they lost, but they'll compete again at the Buckeye Regional later this year. And you know, I've like I talked about earlier, the robot is incredible. They're going to be a great robot at Buckeye. They're going to be a great robot at the World Championship. And I'm really excited to see just how far they can take this machine. Yeah. So we'll have to see how this game kind of. I have a couple of things. So we'll have to see how this game kind of plays out and where they rank at championship. If they're somehow still around for like that that third robot, that second pick, they would be so good because they don't, they can score. They have no fuel storing capabilities, but they're so good at picking up gears and a climb that I think it would be whoever gets them. If they're not already up there is going to be uh, in really good shape. So okay. the other thing is this is a huge 340 has like a huge, I don't know what, like monkey on their back with the finger lakes regional. It's our hometown regional. It's the, it's in its 13th year. 340 has been out of the 13 years. 340 has been a finalist eight times and have not won the regional. <laughs> Jesus. They have been finalist the past four years, um, and wow. they've been finalist six out of the last two, three, four, five, six, six out of the last uh, yeah six out of the last seven years. So like this was like this was a huge. Like I think just a huge letdown for 340, just to not to be able to take that win, just just being so close so many times. But um, again, great robot from them. Really excited to see you. Um, just I'm just so happy for them. They have such a great robot this year. Mike and I am Mike, and we were part of those a lot of those tough finalists. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially 2011. I mean, I was yeah. you know being with 3015 now. We won the event, and I my heart still hurts. Um, yeah. For them, it's just you know it's a we were, yeah one mini bot halfway up the pole burning. Up away from winning and <laughs> not only winning and beating 2056. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So, one, one thing I got to add is how rigged this poll is because uh, 3015 beat 340. Now, 340 is ahead of the poll. So, this poll yeah. is clearly the right. I think it proves that it's not because if yeah, I, I, I that's my point actually. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to retort me on it. I think it, to- gotcha. it proves that. Yeah, it, it totally proves that. Hopefully, you know, people are paying attention to the robots. This this isn't top alliances. We'll get to that in a little bit. That's These right. are the top robots. It's not alliances. No question about it. Cool. All right. So we'll move to 17th this week and talk about 1574. From Mizgav Hazafan, Israel, it's Miss Carr with a record of 29, 4, and 1. They were winners at the Israel number 1 and 3 events. So they've been turning heads this year with their super efficient fuel scoring robot. Um, do you want to dump out all the hoppers? Yeah, that's fine. They'll go around and pick them up off the floor, and their intake works pretty well for that, too. Um, they've now won two district events this year, as well as the District of Chairman's Award. They're in great shape to take home that district championship in its inaugural year. It's been really fun to watch this team over the year. They've always been uh, really sticking out in Israel, making their self known over here in the United States in that championship. Um but it's really excited to see how they've been dominating their own district this year. Um, so congratulations to Miss Carr. Good luck at district championships, and we'll see you. Um, I'm not sure which. I'm not sure which one they go to, which is so sad um, that there's two. But um, and good luck at championship for sure. Uh, Israel's going to South Champs. South Champs, South Half Champs. Okay, so that was Miss Carr in 17th, and in 16th we have team number 41, 43. From Metamora, Illinois, Metamora High School, it's Mars Wars with a record of 25 and 6 overall. They're the winners of the Central Illinois Regional. 
So coming off a uh, semifinal outing at the St. Louis Regional, Mars Wars took the field again this past weekend at Central Illinois. 4143 is able to score a gear in auto while shooting fuel in a fadeaway uh, type basketball mm-hmm. shot after. So, so cool to watch. After they, after they cycle gears, they climb at the end. They don't shoot 30 plus balls in auto, but Mike, what are your thoughts on their auto shooting strategy? Is it worth it? <laughs> So let me back up here for a second. So it's, it's worth oh, it yeah, when so you pair up with about. 2041. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's what I'm saying, right? So 2041 shoots however many, right? If they don't get to quite 40, a team that can just plop in really slowly compared to some of these teams, yeah. like a you know one, two, like that can really help out. Like they can get you to that 40 or get you like very close and just kind of help. Um, whatever dominating score you do have on your lines, just to be able to maybe go get one hopper's worth and be done, you know, or go grab, you know, three to six, nine balls to get them in and be done. So I love how they just kind of like they're in auto. They're just backing up to go or driving forward, whatever it is to the, to the airship to place while they're shooting, while they're placing a gear. And it was really cool. And even though they're only shooting like five or six balls or whatever it may be, that's huge when they're, when they count for one for one in auto. Um, and you have so many balls that are flying through the air then some get, you know, missed out. It's, I think it's just huge. And so is it, so the question kind of was, is it worth it to shoot five balls and then be done for the whole match? I think so for a team like that, that can really assist and be a re- really good complement to like a really high scoring fuel score. I think so. I don't know if anybody else has any thoughts, but. Yeah, so, I mean, that alliance in general was an absolutely fantastic alliance because 22-20, the last pick of the of the draft, was able to score balls in auto. <laughs> so you had you had all three robots. <laughs> so Mars Wars in 22-20 only scoring a couple themselves, but it was enough to put right. over the top for Roboteers where, you know, exactly. worst-case scenario, Roboteers just had to go and pick up a few. So I'm going to quibble at Mars Wars, and I don't mean this by any disrespect at all. I mean this in only the best way of kind of being uh, – close to what a Robo Tears is, but not quite there. And it, it, they have the sword drive. They're really good at scoring gears. They're really maneuverable. Their ball scoring is just not there at what Robo Tears is yet. But you put those two teams together, they're clearly right. the best alliance, and clearly nobody was going to beat them. I mean, mm-hmm. the closest they got, I think, was 40 points in Finals 2 or something like that. In the rest of the matches, you're, you're talking 150-point differences for a lot of them. And uh, Mars Wars and... and and my old team, Wave Robotics, actually go back a long ways because we were uh, we picked them up as our last pick as the number one seed on the uh, division finals in 2012, uh, actually. So and we end up so we end up being finalists with them. So we've we've known them for a long time. They've continued to uh, evolve more and more. And you know, with uh, you know, Ponage uh, going away from Swerve Drive this year, you know, they could be the new uh, king of Swerve in Illinois. So. Then maybe they might have to fight Robo Tears for that, but I know that's one thing that I've I've known I've heard a lot of back and forth too. And you know who is the best swerve in Illinois, and uh, with Ponage going away from that, you know maybe Mars War steps into that. So, but yeah, great robot, uh, great team, uh, and it's great to see them continually evolve. They've had a, a very similar linear path of what Robo Tears have had. They're just a you know a couple of years behind of that mark. But if you go back a couple of years where Robo Tears was, Mars Wars is at that mark right now. So look for them to keep growing more and more. Very cool. Good conversation. Oh, yeah, guys. I got I gotta mention one thing. Somebody I, I don't think we have a picture of it, but somebody in chat mentioned they had a guy in a full Roman soldier gear, like actual armor and stuff <laughs> on him. Like That's it was awesome. it was nuts. Like the, the suit looked like it weighed like 30, 40 pounds. Like it was it crazy. Did. And this guy was dancing and stuff, by the way. Like I now I look at you know myself and I I have no shame or, anymore because I'm like, man, that guy can dance with a 40 pound suit on. You know, I should be able to keep going forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oops, cool. All, right. All right, boys. Great discussion. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. move along here to the 15th ranked team this week and team number 27. From Clarkston, Michigan, Clarkston High School, it's Hall of Fame team Rush with a Steamworks record of 20 and 14. They were the winners at the Waterford District event. So this Hall of Fame team competed this past weekend at the Waterford District event after taking home a silver finalist medal at the Northern Lights Regional earlier this year. After their matches in Michigan, uh, they placed 19th and were selected to the number three alliance, impressively taking down the hot team 67 and 33 um, in the finals. Rush and their alliance took home the gold. So team 27 uh, would also go home and take the, uh, so we talked about earlier, take home the District Engineering Inspirations Award, putting them at three medals for the year. So congrats to them and good luck at Howell. 
So when I first saw that, I mean, Rush, Rush is, can hold their own for sure. Like, they're no, like, wimpy team. But to see that they took down 67 and 33 yeah. in the finals was, uh, was I had, you know, gave you that, like, double take, you know? So I just think this game is prone to that happening. Like, you know, I go back to, you know, my first experience competing this weekend with this game. You don't know what's you don't know what's going to happen until until you see all three lights on your airship, you know, and you can't off your robots got the climb. The game is still very much up in the air, um, especially some of these events where there there are only three or four truly, uh, you know, excellent teams. So this game is uh, it's finicky for sure. And when there's not like that much when. Yeah, exactly. When scores can be so close and so like just level, like, you know, you hit your. KPA maybe and you get that bonus yeah. you get your three rotors you get your three climbs when it's so like I don't know what to call it like leveled like you, you just bounce up if you don't hit one of those you're, you're done and when those things just count for so many points and there's not like you know in years past where you know there's accounts like per ball and stuff like that it's just gonna yeah. really really be devastating like 305 is the magic number right 305 mm-hmm. is the, the gear auto full mobility three rotors three climbs 305 so, you know, a lot of teams, a lot of alliances have found themselves that, you know, that's their cap. And like Michael, you were mentioning earlier, just a team that, you know, you're, they're not the Roboteers, but if they can just add a few more balls, makes all the difference. It really does. And I think I, it was one of your matches. Oh, no, I think it was, no, when you guys played my brother's team, 174, yeah, um, and beat them, I said, I was like, you know, it was it was the fuel. That's that, that it was the 10 points of fuel. And I think there was yeah. a penalty that match, too. But it was like, that was it. It was 10 points is what decided it, you know. And it just, just doing the fuel is what it was. Yeah. Yeah, one thing to mention, just as a statistic, too, for 27, their alliance obviously able to get four rotors in three of their elimination matches. So that was a big, big thing for them, getting them over the top. Yeah, in our in finals match two at Finger Lakes, we scored 17 balls in autonomous. 1507 scored one ball in autonomous. We won 322 to 306. Fuel was 100 percent the difference. So mm-hmm. it's uh yeah. It's an and it game. depends. It'll depend um, event to event, which is I think what kind of maybe makes this hard either for our voters or hard to judge because it depends on the teams that are there. You know, so if you don't have two alliances that are scoring. Um, 40 KPA and getting that bonus, I guess it's still, I guess it then this is kind of the same thing because you're at that evil level playing field again. But uh, it just, it's, I said it, it's kind of different sort of games a little bit within the game, depends on the event. But. Yeah. All right, cool. So, go for it. Oh, so speaking of that team and our 14th <laughs> uh, place team, it's Team 67. From Highland Cheddar Township, Michigan, Huron Valley Schools is the hot team. 2017 record of 24, 9 and 2 through the finals of the Waterford event. So looking to prove on their semifinal outing against 33 at Southfield, the Hall of Fame hot team ranked first and selected 33 to their alliance at Waterford. Hot delivers gear and auto, cycles gears and telap, and can add a little bit of fuel uh, as needed to the high efficiency boiler. Hot team year and year out, uh, you know, just brings an exemplary robot. You know how how to build great robots. It's always exciting to watch them play. So still haven't found a way to earn that win this season, um, but certainly not uh, done for them. And we'll look for them to be very competitive in future events. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at what you wrote in the bottom there. <laughs> Let's move on. That will be a, that, joke. That's going to be a subject for Monday's candidly speaking, by the way, which hope to be you'll find out what it is once we announce it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Carthay. Or uh, Carthay has nothing to do with hot. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> that's funny. Inside jokes. All right. Yeah. I hope to be in- a part of it someday. <laughs> inside, in, inside jokes are great for live web shows. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. we have over uh, 200 live viewers, so thank you. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. Close, I feel like we, we need like a thing that just like makes it like rain down and on our screen like over. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Thank you everybody for tuning in. All yeah. right, so we'll keep it going here from 14 to 13 and talk about team 195. From Southington, Connecticut, Southington High School is the Cyber Knights. An overall record of 22 and 10. They were the semifinalists at the Waterbury District event and the New York Tech Valley Regional. So the Cyber Knights are coming off an incredible season last year and are looking to get kind of get back to that level. Uh, they were semifinalists at Waterbury Earth this year, so they came out of the New England District looking for some hardware. They ranked first and assembled their alliance, but couldn't get out of the semifinals yet again, uh, this time playing the number four alliance. They head back into the district system, looking for some points to get them to the district jams. Um, so good luck to them. And uh, they just, man, their robot is just, 
beautiful. The way they like, the way they shoot, and um, I just love seeing teams that have their shooter so dialed in. It's just like a the perfect arc to get in there, just right over the the first lip and in, um, and they got that, and uh, just uh, it's great, um, just watching them. And uh, I know they're um, always put out good robots. I can't think of their Gino and Sandra. They do some great work with that team, so uh, it's been fun watching them over the years. Yeah, they were one of the teams that, uh, you know, we have we uh, competed with them at Newton in 2015. So we have a lot of friends on the team, and we kept kind of we felt like we were always chasing 195. We would we would get our shooter, you know, a little bit better. They would post something in their Snapchat of a, uh, you know, their robot trading balls. And we felt like we were behind all over again. So <laughs> yeah. they were a great team for sure. Cool. So from one New England district team to the next, let's talk about team 125. From Boston, Massachusetts, Rivera High School, it's the Neutrons. 24, thir- 24 and 13 overall with the finalists of the Greater Boston District event. So 125 is still hungry for their first win, twice being finalists, but you know they're still working incredibly hard. Crazy to think. They're still signed up for two more events, district events, before their district championship, <laughs> which is going to be a crazy amount of matches. Um, the shooter's running well, but still looking for that perfect alliance that's required in this game to get the win. But a huge congratulations to them for picking up the district chairman's award. Uh, it's a great accomplishment for their team, and they'll look to find that elusive district event win uh, later in the season. So we, I think we got to ask Christine about this a little bit here. Let's let's bring her in. Um, hey. Yeah. Hey. So you got you guys. <laughs> hey, kids. So guys, hey. Yeah, finalists at Greater Boston and a uh, couple other awards to go along. There's chairman's award too, right? Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Talk, yeah. Talk about your experience a little bit at, at that event. Yeah. So the tricky part about this event is that um, about five of our key mentors are running the event. So it's always a really stressful situation for us kind of stepping back and hoping that everything goes well. Um, on the chairman side of things, we had two new students kind of running the show and they pulled it off and I was really relieved and proud of them. So I get to kick it until district champs, which is great. Um, the robot got really dialed in. Our programmers have been working nonstop with vision and it, it definitely paid off. Um, I know South Florida, we were we were hitting fuel shots, but I think we were really dialed in at Boston and we're looking forward to Rhode Island this weekend to be playing with, you know, some of the same teams that we saw already this year, but a lot of, you know, different ones that are, you know, just as capable as we are with shooting. So I'm excited. And, you know, the kids did a great job and I think we're working on some new gear stuff. So should be a good time. Sweet. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations once again to you guys. Uh, Continue improvement, um, and that shooter's trying to really get locked down, so we look forward to seeing that in your other events coming up. Yeah, thanks. Sweet. Yeah. All <laughs> right. On to, on to number 11. Number 11, team 1987. From Lee Summit, Missouri, Lee Summit North High School, it's the Bronco Bots, 13-2 and two overall, and we're the winners of the Greater Kansas City Regional. So it's an efficient gear bot that plays this game really well. Um, the shooter wasn't quite where they wanted it to be, uh, but their gear ability was definitely top notch. Uh, this team is really close to 1986. So we've talked about uh, many times before. So I, I think they work together. Um, so anyways, congrats to them. Uh, they'll be competing again in Iowa. And uh, it's, I know we talked about it, I think, a little bit earlier in the show. And um, I, th- I was watching, yeah, I was watching, I think, a match from the Greater Kansas City and seeing them in 1986 on the field and everybody else was just like, it was an awesome, awesome match to watch. Yeah, so 1987 was paired up with Kryptonite. Um, and they, they got they got four rotors in three out of the last four matches. So that's just, yeah. that's really a, an impressive feat. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think so we confirmed, yeah, Waterhawk said they're, they're right next door to each other, so... Yeah, but I, yeah, I was gonna was say the, um, thank you, Death. Let's say I didn't think they I didn't think they actually worked together that much. So it looks like their chat saying that as well too. Yeah. So yeah, close to close to each other by number and location. Um, I remember but, that yeah. like from before. I think they should. And do they share a shop? I think it's something like that. They yeah. I think I Keltran's know. saying they share quote share build space and that they're neighbors, but they don't work together. <laughs> how do you not work together based off? Like, how would you yeah. not draw off each other? Yeah. But then yeah. again, didn't, didn't 1987 and 2005 have that conveyor robot? That sounds right. Uh, 2007? Or uh, the, uh, 2015. I don't know where the hell I came up with 2007. No, wasn't that? That was a uh, Blackhawk, wasn't it? No, yeah, 1987. 
Oh, you're 1987 right. had, a, had a conveyor, had a like a ridiculous conveyor bot, and they yeah. couldn't get anybody to cap their stacks for them. But it was, uh, yeah, just so maybe my point being is that, you know, maybe they really truly don't work together because those were two very radically different designs. Yeah. I was talking about the, uh, sometimes we always talk about like at these events, the finals kind of happen sometimes in the semifinals. And I think maybe this happened in, uh, at Greater Kansas City in the semifinals, we saw yeah 624, 1987, and 5801 versus 1986, 3528, 1723, with match scores of 418 to 377 and 397 to 329. So definitely, those were really cool matches to watch there. I think we're gonna be talking about a couple more of those teams coming up. Probably odds are good. I I know the guy that made the list. I mean, just assemble the data. <laughs> Didn't make the list. No. Rigged. Rigged. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's take a take a break here, guys. I'm not sure if you have anything else you wanted to go over, but we will go through the top five alliances of the week. And thank you once again. We had a huge voter turnout for that. I think about 80% of our voters picked the top alliance. So uh, absolutely fantastic. On that, apparently Windows wants me to update here. Uh, fantastic for, for doing that. So let's go through our top five. So at uh, number five, it is going to be the Israeli district number four, 4590, 4338, and 2231. So this vote is kind of interesting because the leading team, Orbit, uh, did not get into the finals, uh, but yet this event was still voted number five. So uh, mad respect. I don't really know, honestly, any of the teams that are on this list too well because uh, they're not the top perennials that you see uh, from Israel, but congratulations for them for taking spot number five. I should ask you guys before. Do you guys have a favorite one? Favorite Mike alliance? Justin? A favorite yeah, alliance? A favorite winning alliance from this week. Mm. I'll let you think about it. How's that? Thank you. All right. Um, in our number four spot is the Lone Star Regional, 118, 1477, and 5526. Uh, I think we talked about one of these teams already uh, on the top 25. We might see another one as well, too. Uh, through this, so obviously, uh, a lot of cohesiveness. 118 picking up 1477 uh, and working with them this time instead of getting beat by them, I think uh, turned out quite well as they won that regional. Our next one is the Greater Kansas City Regional 1987. We just talked about with 624 and 5801. And uh, obviously, you know, beating the number one alliance with Teen Titanium, I think, had a lot of mad respect. Uh, for something like this, and the alliance, you know, got the gears. They're able to get the four rotors going. Huge win at the Greater Kansas City Regional. So I think the last two are the the top three were actually pretty close together, but the last two, I think, is what I would have picked uh, in mm -hmm. there personally. Uh, but in number two was the Central Illinois Regional, twenty four eighty one, forty one forty three, and twenty two twenty. We've already talked about one of these teams in 41-43. It was an event that I was at. They have the world high unpenalized score. Uh, obviously, they're going to work together really well. They get something like that. Uh, so great to see from that alliance. Uh, and we're going to see, uh, I believe, uh, more out of at least one or two of those teams uh, moving forward. Of course, they'll be at champs as well. And number and then, one. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I don't think it's any surprise, right? And number one. So yeah. San Francisco Regional, 254. 971, 4990. Uh, we haven't mentioned any of these teams yet, so we'll see if they fall into the top 25 or not. Uh, as uh, Justin would say, he shook his magic uh, eight ball and chances say good. Uh, so right. it, yeah. it will, uh, we'll see if they show up in there. So, Mike, so what I did you have I, there? I would say I think I would go with that, that uh, 254, 971, 4990, only because – I think to that level is what we'll see on Einstein. I think to that level is what first was hoping we would see for the boilers. Um, just the downpouring of, of balls into the, into the high efficiency uh, boiler up there. Um, so I think it was just more of like, hey, this is like kind of like what this game is supposed to be about. Like I said, this, those first couple of weeks can sometimes be rough. Teams are figuring out themselves, figuring out their robots. Um, but seeing just a, two streams of balls just going into the boiler was uh, uh, really cool to watch. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I mean, everybody in chat's putting those torque knots for the uh, yeah. Minnesota Regional Alliance. Go ahead. <laughs> they think they're so funny. Um, I, I mean, I mean, take nothing away from 254, 971, 4990. They have a great alliance. Um, if if fuel is your thing, 
that's great. But I'm I think uh, the 2481 alliance was much mm-hmm. more well rounded. I mean, in the semifinal match one, two 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 fifty four nine seventy one four nine ninety got one rotor engaged. That's it. I think it was more or in just... auto in auto than two rotors engaged total. So like that's not yeah. that's not. 107 fuel is incredibly impressive, certainly. Yeah. But I think 2481 was much more well-rounded. Well, and to add into that, with that 2220 was crucial that alliance still. So it, it yeah. as as well mentioned, they end up having the fastest climb at the event uh, because of the cheesecake that 2041 put on them, uh, and they played really just lights out defense, absolutely great defense, and they scored an auto. Uh, yeah, man, that's that's a tough call between the two, and it was definitely definitely close in our voting. Yeah. All right, should we move on to the top 10? Let's do it. All right, so in our 10th spot, we're going to hear about Team 1690. From Bini Amina, Northern Israel, it's Orbit, 13 and 14 overall with the semifinals of the Israel District Event number 4. 1690 took the number one seat at the Israeli Regional, blew the doors off in semifinal match 2, where they got four rotors and 40 KPA in one match for an impressive score of 491. Unfortunately, however, the Alliance didn't have the legs to reach the finals, but they have a great robot, a great team overall. They're going to be a force at the Israeli um, District Championship and certainly the World Championship. You know, we got a chance to play with them last year in Tesla and on Einstein, and I just can't say enough about, you know, the the people on that team. They're really impressive, and it's just unfortunate, again, not to bring up a sore subject, but... Not being able to see them at championship this year yeah. as they're suited for Houston is going to be a, a bummer for us because we really built a, a strong relationship with them. <clears throat> Very cool. That's what's great about first. I mean, this team, team, people you would never, ever, ever get a chance to meet that you're, you know, working with and getting to know and everything. Very cool. Yeah, I feel like if you're a North Chance, by the way, you definitely uh, get screwed out of the multicultural experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of the outside North American countries are going to South Champs. Yeah. I'm still, right. I'm still inspired, guys. Don't worry. Still well, inspired. I'm not. <laughs> All right. In the, in the single digits we go, the ninth ranked team this week, the FC Top 25, is team number 33. From Auburn Hills, Michigan, Notre Dame College Preparatory School, it's the Killer Bees. 29-9 overall. They were the winners at the Southfield District event. So after a week one win, 33 looked to go two for two in the FIM district. 67 was the number one seed and scooped up 33, and the Alliance was able to advance to the finals. Where they ran into the gauntlet of the 2137 Alliance, but take nothing away from 33, they are a scoring machine. They really are. It's a lot of some of their matches. And they will have a huge role in how the Michigan State Championship will be decided. You can catch them once more before that when they compete at the Windsor Essex um, district event next weekend. I always want to say Great Lakes Regional. Man, thirty fifteen. They love thirty three. We have some students on our team that think Jim Zondag is literally God on earth. He's, he's the, a legend. He is. They kiss the ground he walks on. <laughs> oh literally. man. When we uh, when we beat them in uh, the Tesla or yeah the Tesla finals last year, um, we were, our driver walked up and said he just said like the nicest things to say about Jim Zondag was uh, their. Uh, good stuff there. I love that, man. So cool. From ninth to 8th, we'll talk about Team 624. From Katy, Texas, Cinco Ranch High School, it's corrupt tonight. 21 and 11 overall, the winners of the Greater Kansas City Regional. So with most of Texas competing at the Lone Star Regional, 624 decided to take their talents to the Greater Kansas City Regional. Uh, they didn't see as high as they would have liked, uh, but they were selected to the number four alliance, and the semifinals had to go against that number one alliance in an intense gear versus fuel battle that we talked about uh, quite a bit. In both instances, however, the four rotors for 624 and company was enough to beat the fuel machine of 1986 to advance past them and eventually move to the finals and take the win. So an awesome job for 624. You can catch them back in Texas at the Lone Star North Regional in a couple of weeks. There's a Lone Star North and South. I didn't know that. Yeah, Lone Star North and uh, yeah, and, and Central, isn't there? Really? I don't. Know. I think there's a Central one too. I don't know. Lone Star Central and no, just Central and North. Central and North. Okay. No South. Cool. All right. So from eight to seven, we go to forty-six to thirteen. From uh, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, Bar- and Barker College. It's the 
Barker or Red Packs, excuse me, 46 and 9 overall winners at the Shenzhen Southern Cross. Did I say that right? <laughs> Southern like, Cross. Yeah, yeah, close enough. And eh, whatever. And South Pacific Regionals. So three. Wow. Yeah. Incredible season for 46 13, and their season isn't over yet. I still believe they are one of the best, if not the best, fuel scorer in FRC. Um, 20 times they've gotten the 21 times they've gotten the four, the 40 KPA in qualification matches um, where it's been all them. The NFC that make it look easy. Um, this could be a record uh, for underrated in the FRC top 25. Three regional wins only gets you seventh place. <laughs> it's crazy. Three so, wins in three, three weeks. No, three wins in two weeks, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. They're like nuts for that. So Justin, I know you want to talk about these guys. So let's hear about them. I love the Barker Redbacks so much. They're my new favorite <laughs> team, honestly. Um, but just like, just like when, when 340 put out the release video and everyone talks about, wow, it's super simple, it's super elegant, they make it look easy. I get the same thing for fuel when I'm like at 4613. They just like pull up to the boiler, they put balls on the top, they get the 40 KPA, and on they go. They just make it look so easy. And I just, I think they're a great team. Um, you know, they're, they're a powerhouse of Australia, and I just can't wait to, to watch them on their journey this year. And I really think that at the World Championship, again, in Houston, they will uh, they'll continue to do great things, and I'm excited to see what they're able to accomplish this year. So I want I want to give a counterpoint here, and to and nothing against uh, Mr. Sellers here, who has uh, subscribed to us for several months now. So thank you for that. Uh, but uh, 4613 is good. However, I don't think based on the top five that we have this week that they would surpass any of these top five teams. Uh, in 1v1 play. And that's just my opinion in general. Uh, they're a good team. They score pretty consistently, but some of the like the autonomous scoring that we're seeing from some of these other top five teams to me uh, it is just a higher amount to something like that. So nothing nothing against 46-13, but uh, I think they're getting to the elite level. I'm not sure if they're at the elite elite personally. I just think the only thing that, you know, I agree with you certainly, but the only thing that I would say is, the fact that these elite teams are scoring in autonomous is impressive, but the fact that 4613 is able to consistently get the ranking point without yeah. the super strong and autonomous to me is is more impressive. Well, and they and, put and up even super strong alliances, right? Because yeah. you, let's be honest, that you know the Australia regional, there are a few good teams there, but it's a shortlist regional, which also means you know there's not as many good teams you know necessarily on the on the way back around that sort of thing. So I'll agree with you on that point. Sure. But yeah, Baca, Redbacks, great people. Baca. 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 All right, seven to six. We're going to hear about team. Oh, I didn't delete that. Uh, team 1477. From the Woodlands, Texas, College Park High School. It's a Texas Torque. 1477, an impressive 35 and or 30 and 5 overall with the winners of Lone Star Regional. So 1477 team came so close to tasting gold in Hub City where they fell just short in final match three. They looked to remove any doubt of their Texas powerhouse status with a strong win at Lone Star Central. Their machine is fast is a fast an effective gear runner who excels at getting those rotors spinning. When they teamed up with 118, it was it was game over. So congrats to 1477 for that sweet double gold clean bling as they also picked up the regional chairman's award to go along with their win. Ding, ding. Um, cling, 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 cling. So you can uh, pick them up again at the Lone Star North Regional in a couple weeks. We by the way, we should we should have Kling Bling as a, as a new emote for us, by the way. Oh, yeah, we should. Like, so once we pass our next, uh, we already have the next two in, in, in the pipeline right now, uh, but once we get our next two uh, emotes, uh, so we have to get enough subs for that, but once we get our next two, I think that we might have to do something gold, like that. Gold, gold, silver. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. All right, into the top five we go and talk about yes, team yes. 1986. From Lee Summit, Missouri, Lee Summit High School, and right through the door of 1987 shop that nobody goes through. <laughs> Even though it's not locked. <laughs> Even though it's not locked. It seems titanium. Nova record of nine and four. They were the semifinalists at the Greater Kansas City Regional. So 1986, this robot is amazing. They score over 30 KPA in auto. They cycle gear and have a fast climb at the end. It's just a classic 1986 robot. Well designed, well executed. If you're ever at an event with 1986 or at their half champ, um, go to their pit, check out their robot. They have a ton of 3D printed stuff on there. Um, they always have creative ways and in, in, um, ingenuitive ways to play these first games. So they have two more regionals this year. They should definitely be taking on some gold. Uh, ran into some, a little bit of trouble, a little bit uh, didn't go their way, but um, awesome. Another great robot from, from Titanium. 
Yeah. It, so one of the things I want to mention about Titanium and a little story I'll give you for that uh, is the first year that that we started on Wave Robotics, which was 2009. Um, we were we played against them in a, a regional at 10,000 Lakes in Minnesota. The robot that year, while looking nice, and if you know the 2009 game, the only thing that robot did was catapult supercells or catapult empty cells into the human player area that converted the supercells. That's the only thing the robot did. And the, the look at the amazing, incredible progress that team has made um, catching their stride, probably what, 2013, would you say, is when they really started hitting their stride? Yeah. yeah 20, they had. 20, 2012, even they had a great robot. Yeah. Um, and, and just seeing that that progression that they have as a team, that's, to me, what you want to see as, as teams do uh, as they move through is that you see that awesome progression and it continues. It's sustainable. It's not a one-hit wonder. It keeps moving through. That's what you want out of a first team. Yep, no question about it. Yeah, 2012, they won two regionals, and they haven't looked back yeah. since. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so from five to four, we heard from them before. Well, I didn't mean to say that. It's 2481. <laughs> <laughs> You're a poet. You didn't even know it. From Tremont, <laughs> Illinois, Tremont High School is defending world champ Roboteers, 26-6 and six overall. we were the winners of the Central Illinois Regional. So like 118, a not-so-strong outing at the Hub City Regional, I uh, had 2481 looking for a strong rebound in Illinois. 40 KPA uh, in five matches, five of their qualification matches, earned them a 2.3 average ranking score and an easy number one seed. In the finals, the strategy was simple. Ride 2481's auto and finish off the KPA, get those three rotors spinning and climb. Easier said than done for most alliances, but honestly, these guys really made it look easy. They have another great machine and got the win they needed. Congrats to them and good luck in St. Louis. To 2481, the Roboteers. Yeah, dude, they're oh, it's a thing of beauty watching that that thing score, man. Score fuel. Yeah, Will so, is yeah. so humble. Didn't think they'd be in the yeah. top five. <laughs> yeah. Well, so just the one thing, you know, I gushed about this team enough, but the one thing I'll add in is that you look at last year. They were world champions last year. They won all their events last year. They were sitting back in a lot of at last year the top twenty-five in the lower half for something like that. So people, you know, say, you know, they should be number one and maybe they should based on your votes or something like that. But this team is progressing just like titanium through, through these areas. They're starting to become much more well-known in, in the world at FRC, not just their local area. And that shows right there with the being voted number four uh, in the top 25. Yeah. And it takes a while to kind of get that recognition. You, everybody knows when 254, 118, uh, uh, you know, 1678, 1114, 20, they all, they all know when they compete. But it takes a little while for people to be intentionally looking for a team like 2481, you know, or 1986, something like that. Um, it takes a while to get to that point, and they're getting there, you know. So, and this is why it's the, the popularity poll sometimes, and we know that, we understand that. Um, but it's really cool to kind of see that change, like you said, from last year, a team that it was world champions that was rated, you know, relatively in the low half a lot. Um, so it's cool, and I'm really happy for them. Well, one last thing that you know we didn't. We should ask Will, and maybe he'll type in chat if he's still watching. Is twenty forty one doesn't have any sort of ground pickup? And that's really interesting because we saw that with uh, eleven fourteen as well too, and they're pretty similar uh, from a style that they don't have any sort of ground pickup for for gears or for fuel. And to still see that succeeding because they're getting enough KPA now in auto or quickly. I mean, the the strategy against twenty forty one just like eleven fourteen was to go and trigger all the hoppers immediately. But now they've got their shooting down so well, it doesn't matter if you do that. Yeah, that's anymore. a great like. So it makes you kind of wonder, like, you know, is 11-14-2041 building for championship saying, hey, you know, this we may get bit in the butt a little bit if yeah. people would then go and dump out of the hoppers and we can't get them. You know, yeah. but, well, 2041 has an automatic bid the champs anyway, so I think sure. they can afford to do that. Well, yeah, all, sure. It does too, actually. But yeah. are you playing to that or saying, hey, championship, you know, we're going to be with teams that can score as well. Like if for whatever reason we don't get the 40 KPA, we're planning on it. You know, we should dial on our shooter to get to that point. But, you know, it's really, really an interesting strategy coming out maybe in those first couple of weeks of events. But, you know, when you think about it in long term, like, hey, yeah, a ground pickup for at least for fuel um, really isn't that necessary, I don't think. Okay. Gears, I'm a different story, but. Um, it's worked for, for them fuel, so far, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Those two teams you just talked about have two regional wins. So. It's whatever. It's whatever. Another Number sub. Five. Thanks, Waterhog. What? I said we just got another sub. From oh, Waterhog. yeah, nice. 
We catch some of them occasionally. We'll 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 read off our subs at the end of the show too. So yeah. thank you very much. We do three to go. All right, three to go, and in that third spot is team number nine seventy one from Mountain View, California, Mountain View High School at Spartan Robotics, fourteen and two overall, and were the winners at the inaugural San Francisco Regional. So like 254, FRC patiently waited to see 971 on the field. They achieved the 40 KPA in four qualification matches and all of their elimination matches. Their paintball hopper is working well and will only get better as the season progresses. More work on their gear mechanism will make them even better when they compete um, at the Silicon Valley Regional next weekend. So congratulations and good luck to 971 going forward. Man, watching that team and their uh, counterpart compete is just something else. Yeah, it's definitely uh, ball heaven going on over there. That yeah, abs- absolutely nuts. Yeah, I, that's right. That, go ahead. But I'm really interested to see how that style of play is going to um, going to work. Because if we're going to be honest, that San Francisco was a very weak event. So uh, you know, case in point, 254 and company won the event finals match two, playing a robot down. Um, yeah, I just I'm kidding, I, right? I'm just not sure if that strategy is going to fare well. Um, for them in future events. I think both robots didn't look as good as they will look later. Um, I think the reason why they're they're so high um, is because they have a lot of name recognition, not because they were they were so lights out. I think 2481 was way better than sure. uh, the 971 and, and 254 to uh, both. So it's really interesting. Yeah. I just to, you know they might be the only, one of the few teams. Um, in Seamwork so far, that one in a finals match or an elimination match, only getting two rotors spinning. Um, it's just a, it's a risky strategy in most think, events. And that's why, I like, going back to, like, uh, the top alliance of the week, I think the wow factor was kind of there for 254 and 971, just going out and just scoring a bunch of balls because they could, because I don't, you know, I think they're going to make up for the difference and they maybe weren't playing the strongest of teams or whatever. The wow factor was there, which is why, like, I think I kind of chose them. However... <laughs> The 506 point match by 2481 and company is amazing. It's incredible. Like, yeah. and that, that's like yeah. kind of like what is more, which is I like a little bit more. Yep. You know, 254, 971 just lights out up in the high bowler, but you need to play the complete game and not just one element of it. Not that, not that 254, well, 971 the, wasn't. The, the, let me, but, I would say, let me jump in here. I mean, I, you, if you're a team like 254, 971, you are obviously going to evolve as you go through different events. They play that strategy right. because it worked for them in this event right. in particular. I, sure. I'm not saying you guys are saying this by any means, but I, I think 254, 971 are going to be, they, they have enough resources to figure out that they're probably going to have to do something different. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. I think they're playing the, like you said, playing the event. They yeah, need exactly. To get their rotors going because of their, yeah, because they could yeah, win do, in other do ways. Do what you need to do to win. And if that's what they yeah. were doing better, then that's what you do. Yeah, yeah or certainly. taking this time to, you know, to maybe, I don't know, I'm not that. Maybe take this time to really work on dialing their shooters and figure that part out, you know, while they, they have the, the affordability to do so. I'm not sure, you know. Yeah, I mean, I have certainly no question that they're going to do that. They're great teams. But I was thinking on a list that's supposed to reward the best robots, I don't I don't agree that you know, that either one of these robots are certainly better than 2481. But I think mm-hmm. down the road, certainly not right now. <clears throat> All right, from all the dramas in the two spot. Um, so again, thank you to all, everybody who voted. Thanks to everybody who's still with us. Um, we we love doing this. So uh, thank you for, to all you. Thanks to all that have subscribed. And uh, that's all I gotta say. I know we'll we say more later, but a lot of people like to check out after the two because they can true. figure out the one. Well, stream, don't forget those Christine's, kind of Christine's uh, drawing giveaway yeah, is coming up. That's Watch true. That. You not better winning. not leave if you want a chance to win that that thing. Right. That that looks sweet. I, I think it's all mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rigged. 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 <laughs> all right. So in this in the second spot, we have team number 118. From League City, Texas, Clear Creek High School. It's the Robin Outs. 26 and 7 overall with the winners of the Lone Star Regional. So when a team had an outing earlier in the year at Hub City, uh, that served as a bit of a wake-up call for them, uh, a rare wake-up call. Shooter was not dialed in, and a couple of falls off the airship meant a semifinal exit for them. But they showed up ready to go at Lone Star, achieving the 40 KPA in nine qualification matches, 
easily earned them the number one seed, but we're seeing an impressive 2.5 ranking score average, which is crazy. They selected 1477 uh, to join their alliance, and the rest was history. So a great rebound performance is what we expect out of 118, and you can check them out that again, check them out again at Las Vegas, which is going to be a truly uh, insane event before they head to Houston for the World Championship. So good luck to 118, then Robinots. Yeah. Dude, that Las Vegas event is going to be nuts. Yeah, that's going to be off the hook. As the kids say, it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. <laughs> We're too old for that, guys. I know. I'm not. I'm in that environment every day. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you're going to add, add in the fam at the end. Fam. Yeah, fam? It's, yeah, it's going to be fam. lit, fam. <laughs> oh, thanks for joining us again, Libby. Where you been? Comes in the beginning and the end. <laughs> yeah, TYP. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we need to we need to either raid her or she needs to raid us at some point. By the way, she's talking about we should we should have that up. Ra- uh, ratings when you send everybody from your channel over to another channel. Oh, we should do yeah. that. She told me to stop talking earlier, so we're oh, fighting. Dang. <laughs> oh dang! All right, All right, so like giveaways coming up, but first off, our number one seed guest. That's right, and that team is team number two fifty four. From San Jose, California, Bellarmine College Preparatory School. It's the Cheesy Poops. 254 is 16-0 undefeated in the winners of the San Fran Regional. So we had to wait three weeks to see 254 take the field, but definitely worth the wait. The robot strength is is that it boasts uh, the best pickup uh, ball pickup in FRC, and their double-wide shooter drains balls in the high bowler. An incredible machine to watch. They're able to achieve 40 KPA in four qualification matches and all six of their elimination matches. Impressively, uh, in finals match two, they got the 40 KPA solo with 971 sitting out. Uh, it'll be scary to see where this robot um, is by the time they hit the field in St. Louis, and congrats to them. Man, watching like all those balls all over the field, and they kind of you know, sometimes they collect towards the edge. Just watching them run the edge of the field, and just their their hopper or just their yeah their hopper just like fill up with uh, fuel is just incredible. Definitely I, the best ball and take out there. I was so blown away. So I, watching them right for the first time. And I see that, you know, some team's strategy is to hit the hopper to prevent teams from picking up balls. Our strategy on 3015 is we hit the hopper in order to collect those balls. 254 strategy is to dump the hopper so they can pick them up off the ground. I watched them out of autonomous <laughs> mode. Go to the center hopper, dump it. Go to the end hopper, dump it. He just drive the length of the field and go and pick up yep. all those balls. <laughs> it was just incredible. Yeah. So yeah. cool. Then you don't have to sit there, right? You can be like, you can be moving, and yeah, yeah. Yep. That's the, that was, by the way, that was also the first really good sound effect of the 2017 FRC.25. <laughs> that was really good. I can't do that. That's all I got. <laughs> Very cool. So, congrats to the cheesy poofs. Um, we'll see him again. So, love it. So, 25 guys, we did it. That's we it, man. It. Another week down. We're so good at that. How are we done? <laughs> yes, yeah. counting counting down from twenty five. We have mastered that for the okay, most part good. until we start. All right, up. very cool. All right, so Christine, it looks like she's finished up, just putting on those final touches there. So we're gonna do the giveaway in just a few minutes. Remember, you have to follow, um, or for five times tickets, subscribe only for a few dollars a month, or for free through Amazon Prime. So we're kind of we're internally talking before Christine. What is the phrase of the day to win your Snapchat filter? Or no, we're not doing Snapchat filter. We're doing nope. this one, right? It's the actual drawing today. Yeah, the drawing. The, the drawing. Um, so, so yes. in the in the spirit of NASCAR, because that game was an epic game of NASCAR, the um, code for tonight is left turn. <laughs> nice. Nice. So left turn, so make sure you type that in. Type in left turn and stop. Start spamming as many times as you want. It only gets you the same amount of entries. Mike, I'm you can't win. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Because we already rigged this once. <laughs> Actually, twice since a Pauline one, too. Here, I got her name right, by the way. She's probably not even on. And <laughs> yeah, I got her right. Name she's right. not even on. She's, not, she, she's ditched us. She's, she's <laughs> All righty. Um, we're, we're probably going to skip the Q&A today, I think. We'll do the drawing yeah. in just, just a little bit. Uh, since we're, we're running late, we started late. So thank you, everybody, for sticking with us uh, so much. One thing I do want to uh, go over before we leave off is just the people who have subscribed to us uh, from over the last couple of days. So... Uh, Libby will forgive you for uh, watching Walking Dead over us for a little bit since you uh, will we though? But two months resubbing for two months. 
So that makes up for it, guys. All right. Thanks, oh, Libby. Wow. There we go. So th thanks, Libby, for, for doing that. Uh, Jamie, Jamie Sin, uh, subbing for two months, resub for two months. Thank you. Uh, strict liability subscribed. Uh, M. Sellers uh, actually subscribed and then resubscribed for three months. So thank you. Mr. Moko subscribed. Like a boss, 5504 subscribing. And Waterhog91 subscribing. Thank you. Subscribers, welcome to Fun Nation. Uh, we're actually, we'll probably be sending out another subscriber uh, note soon. Um, don't forget, beginning of the month, we'll do we'll do some sort of sub night. Um, we're also going to do some goals, I think, at some point, too. Uh, man, I don't know if we can do this, but it was suggested that we do, like, a uh, inebriated first history night. So I'm not sure if we can we can get that to go through, but we'll, we'll see. see. Wait, There's, wait, it's possible. Say that again? Um, well, I don't want to say it again, then they'll, then they'll hear it. But oh, okay. a potential for an inebriated first history night. So, oh, so we'll see. We, we might part. have to we might have to set a, a pretty high bar for something like that. So, alrighty. Um, so last chance to get in for for the uh, drawing. We're going to be doing that in just a moment. There. Uh, thank you to everybody who's helped making the show possible. Though, uh, once again, you want more first robotics in your life? Shoot us, give us a follow, subscribe to us. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe on there as well. Um, we do have our unedited versions on Twitch. Uh, just we got to do some pared down editing usually for YouTube to get it through all the compliance there. But if you want the full unedited version, make sure you check us out on twitch.tv forward slash first updates. Now, um, we do have some T-shirts available as well, too, if you'd like. We have some new designs out uh, with pocket logos, of a few of our different ones. Excuse me. Uh, so go to firstupdatesnow.com. Click on our uh, fun store and you'll be able to get that. And thanks to Two Pencil Designs and Alex for uh, creating those logos for us and shipping out those T-shirts. We've had a few orders for that. Love to get some more. Uh, just show off your flair. It is free shipping on everything. Uh, so we'd love to be able to shoot that out to you. Uh, it's free shipping as long as you're in the U.S. Uh, big thanks to our producer, Nick Olson, working behind the scenes and doing thanks, a great man. job presenting the show. He did all right today, guys. What do you think? He did a great job. <laughs> Stream some of the ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not good enough. Nobody right. wins. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's do that drawing. Uh, once again, we'll re-roll if for some reason they uh, it should be me. Come on. Thing. It's right, random. How can it be rigged? Emar one two five seven. Uh, that sounds familiar. Roll again. I was a subscriber. <laughs> I wanted five times the chances. You did get five times the chances. Wait. Rigged. So... All right. So Emar one. What? Oh wait, is following and subscribing two different things? Yes. Okay. Subscribing means you give us money. I need a gotcha. Twitch lesson in the worst way. <laughs> yeah, we'll I have do to do too, a uh, <laughs> thing in there. So congrats, Twitch guys. for give, beginners. Give them, give them some love. Uh, BMAR1257, congratulations uh, for, for winning on there. Uh, I've been following since February 13th. So thank you so much uh, for following. And, uh, yeah, congratulations. So all you got to do is shoot us a message. We'll get out to you. If we don't hear from you, by the way, by the end of this show or a little bit afterwards, we'll re-give it away at some point as well and do that. And if we have to do a re-giveaway, I'll tell you what, if for some reason we have to do a re-giveaway and he doesn't get back to us or he or she doesn't get back to us, we'll make it available. We'll re give it. it away to one of our subs. So how's that? So fantastic. Sounds good. Then maybe you'll have a maybe you'll have a chance, Mike. Yes. Please. I mean given up Caltrans been like, you know, forever and he still can't win. So all right. Um, don't forget we do have a full buffet of shows each week. Uh, game day live. Saturday and Sunday. So if you want to be able to get, if you want to watch an event and you don't want to see kids dancing or you don't want to see somebody like me dancing because nobody as hell wants to see that uh, for about five to seven minutes in between matches, give Game Day Live a shot. Uh, right now, what events are we looking at? I think Waterloo is one. What's the other one? I don't remember. Uh, Seneca, I think, was the other ones that were, we're not, we, we don't know until we see the streams <laughs> and hopefully they run on time. So um, that's, that's the way that will go. What I do? <laughs> Mike, emotes, bits, following, subscribing, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I'm the one that has, like, says, uh, I'm the one here that's saying, oh, if you're a follower and a subscriber, I just read this stupid thing. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know script. what it means. Doesn't, doesn't know what it is. <laughs> what does it all mean, Basil? I click on the little, like, paper airplane down here, and it brings up this thing that says get bits, and it says next badge unlocks in 100 bits. I don't know what all this stuff is. <laughs> All right. Um, so once again, game day live, guys, on Saturday and Sunday uh, during the playoffs. So make sure you check it out. We are on t on the Blue Alliance. Uh, so you can go on our channel here or on Blue Alliance. If you're on desktop, you'll see it pop up 
uh, right on top there. Uh, we don't have mobile integration or um, app integration yet. That should be coming hopefully soon um, through them. But we do want to thank Blue Alliance for helping us put that on. Uh, and if you just want to get, if you want to get commentary, you want to get replays, you want to get uh, content in between matches, a little bit more than what, or a lot more than what it would just be just watching a match in between, check out Game Day Live. Uh, we really want to build it up moving into this year. And hopefully if you watch it, let us know how it's going so we can continue to improve it, uh, especially as we move into next year. So uh, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. We do have Candley speaking next Monday as well. Uh, we're, we'll announce those topics a little bit later, but I think it's going to be a good one. There's some a couple interesting things that happened this past weekend that we found out about, and we're going to start discussing some of those. So on behalf of myself, Mike, Justin, Christine, and Nick, uh, I do want to thank you all for tuning in. Thanks to Will Barnickel for being our fantastic guest today uh, and checking in with us, letting us know about 2041. Best of luck to them. And thank you to all of our moderators in chat, uh, keeping it clean in our chat room. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then.